Lalo's listening in. Right there. We'll, we'll do the, we'll have, um, Hermano Adolfo is going to pray us in. Pray for, um, pray for, um, Hold on a second, Pastor. I cannot get in. Huh? I can. Uh, I touch in here. We see you. Have yeah, I? Just I, pray. You. We see you. And we hear you. Yeah. Okay. But oh, there it is. Okay. Got it. So we want to lift up. Um, uh, for, we want to lift up Scott Rogers tonight. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> He's a brother there from from. Calvary Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to lift him up. Uh, and then we want, want to lift up um, one of my customer friends. I told her we were going to pray for her tonight. Her name is uh, Karen. Karen? Karen? Karen. Karen. Oh, Karen. 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 Yeah. Karen. Uh, oh, Karen. Okay. And then um, she has a, a an arm, a fractured arm. She broke it in three places. They want to do surgery, and she's wow. so I'm she's been work. she's been off of work, and she's really concerned about the surgery. <clears throat> she a believer? Uh, she believes, but not not to the fullest. Not um, how do Does you she say? She believes in prayer. She believes in prayer. And she believes. So I told her we're going to lift her up tonight. Um, she texted me today and told, told me that she's concerned about the surgery. She doesn't want the surgery. But I, you know, I kind of like, I told her that we can trust God in the surgery. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Right. I know people don't want surgeries, but she's been, her arms is fractured in three places. Yeah. <clears throat> and if, in order for them to reposition the bone or whatever they have to do, they have, you know, they got to do the surgery. So. I go, we, we, you know, you get the surgery done, trusting in the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, that he would be the surgeon said. And that he would be, yep. you know, he God has her tomorrows, even though we haven't been there, right? But I gave her Proverbs 3, 5, 6, right? To trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Lean not on your own understanding, you know? So I told her, we're going to, you know, trust the Lord in that. Mm -hmm. We want to trust the Lord in that and we want to, and then for and then for Donna too is uh, Randy's uh, sister. Sister también. She's still in the hospital. Uh, I think Randy said she's at home now. Oh, good. But they just they, they removed some of her um, part of her leg and part part of her shoulder. Ouch. She's recovering. Doctor. From... Yeah, Doctor? Can... yeah. Oh man. So we just want to lift that up. Uh, so, so it's Donna, Hermana Donna, and we got Karen. We got Scott Rogers. He's in very critical condition. Um, Randy called me earlier before the study. Well, I mean, no, that, that was kind of like what led me to, to Jeremiah. <clears throat> I was reading in Jeremiah. Yes. And I was able to encourage him with Jeremiah. In chapter 11 and and uh, 12, which we're going we're gonna to go into that tonight because Jeremiah has something to say there. I'll share it with you guys because <clears throat> Jeremiah had, he had his complaint <clears throat> and he was questioning the Lord. <clears throat> and I think, I think that will encourage those who are seeking God's mercy, God's healing. And I, I believe it's going to bring us some encouragement tonight. Amen. Because um, I was able to minister with them um, to Big Randy with that. He's going through a hard time right now. Yeah, it's his sister. <laughs> and his sister, and then we, and then Scott Rogers. He's close to Scott Rogers también. Um, but Scott Rogers at home. He's not in the hospital no more. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. pretty, it's just like, hey, go home, be with your familia. May the Lord have mercy on you, right? Yes. So that's where Scott Rogers is at. Um, so yeah, we can do that. Uh, when you when you pray when you when you pray a sin, Adolfo, and mm -hmm. then what? Gus, he'll do the introduction. Okay. So, 
I'll introduce the ministry since we've been recording. Then we'll move on to Psalm 58 and see what the Lord has for us tonight. Uh, are, are you recording already? Yeah, I'm recording. Yeah. Okay. I just want to know if you can hear my chewing. <laughs> my my eyes chewing. Yeah. You can? Um, no. Okay. I want to make sure. <laughs> I don't want to come on the recording. <laughs> All right. So we want to welcome each and every one of you to the Tabernacle meeting up from above. Um, they've been following with us in the book of Psalms, amen. <clears throat> so, we're going to be in Psalm 58 for tonight. But the tabernacle meeting up from above <clears throat> scripture is Revelation 21 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. Once again, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. The tabernacle that Moses was told to set up while wandering in the wilderness represented the dwelling place of God in this earth. But, God, but this tabernacle of God is the reality of his presence, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. The essence of God's desire. And man's purpose, God's desire is to live in close fellowship with man. And man's purpose is to be a people unto God. The next scripture we have is Psalm 51. Psalm 51, 10 through 12, right? It's a, it's a psalm of repentance from King David. Um, but here we see David, God's chosen king, sin. By having relations with another man's wife, Bathsheba. But God has something to say about David's abuse and power, right? Because he was a king. And sends his prophet Nathan to call David out. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, Nathan uses a story to illustrate the seriousness of David's sin. And it's effective in calling David to repentance. There are still repercussions from his sin. But because Nathan spoke the truth, David repented and avoided bringing further punishment on Israel. And so he wrote Psalm 51, right? He said, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Notice that. After the sin of Bathsheba, he says, Lord, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Lord, give that back to me, Lord. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with the willing spirit, right? May the Lord sustain you and may the Lord sustain me with that what? With that willing spirit, right? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. But the flesh is weak. <laughs> uh, next we have is, is um, Acts chapter 16, right? We have the Philippian jailer with Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were thrown into prison for preaching Jesus in the kaya in the street. <laughs> <clears throat> but God sent an angel and shook the prison up, right? These chains were broken. These men were set free. But the Philippian jailer cried out to them and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Right? And Paul and Silas responded in verse 31. They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Right? Man, just believe. And Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Is any among you afflicted due to alcohol, due to depression, to anger, divorce, drug abuse, death of a loved one, mixed marriages, abandonment? Know that God loves you and awaits for you to respond and to respond to the call. Right? Experiencing God's call may be a process, but answering his call requires a definite decision. Right? Experiencing God's call may be a process, but answering his call requires a definite decision. Right? A delayed obedience is disobedience. A delayed obedience is disobedience. Right? God says, hey, I, I have a calling. Calling in your life. Right? But how do I know what my spiritual calling is? <clears throat> well, you know, you're, you know it by what God, by what comes naturally to you and by what God blesses. Right? 
I have a calling in life, the Lord says. Right? Once again, how do I know my spiritual calling is? You know it by what comes naturally to you and by what God blesses. Right? Amen. That's a tabernacle meeting help from above. Uh, that's who we are, and that's what we're about. Amen. We're going to move Amen. forward with um, Hermano Adolfo. He's going to do us a, pay, a favor and pray us in for tonight. Amen. Your Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus to give you thanks and praises for your precious name and loving kindness and your tender mercies. Father in heaven, you, you want us to come to you in every situation and every time. Uh, not only when we need you, Lord, but all the time. And I saw tonight, Father, we we need you. We need your presence in the life of Scott Rogers. Praying that you will counsel him. That you will show him in dreams and wonders what you want from him the rest of his days that you have counted for him. We also lift up Donna. Keep on asking for divine healing in her life. Whatever the situation might be with her, between you and her, bless her abundant Lord and have mercy. Have mercy upon her and show kindness in your glory. We lift up Taryn before you tonight, praying that your blessings might be upon her, asking that you will guide her to do what you want her to do. I pray that you will show her your mighty will in her life. And that she doesn't need to be afraid. She put your trust, her trust in you. Show her the way that she should go, Papa. I also lift up Laura, praying that your blessings might be upon her also. I pray that you will bring healing in her body. And also Monica, Papa. Praying that you will direct her ways. And you will show her wisdom, knowledge. And you will give her understanding of who she is in Christ. Help her to do what you want her to do. And I lift up all of them before you, Papa. But they're all your children. And I include Brother Goss once more. Praying there. You will show yourself to each and every one of them in a way that they can understand you, Lord. And for everybody out there that it is in need of healing, and anybody that it is uh, in the stress and depression, oppression, anxiety, in any, on, any other circumstance of the spiritual world, the most people don't understand. I pray that you will make yourself known at this time, that you will show your power. And we ask this thing not by might and not by power, but by the Holy Spirit, Lord. And we also pray that your blessings might be upon this study. Anoint Pastor Junior and let everything that we said may be of encouragement to someone, a blessing to someone. They might want to need it, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, Bo. Gracias, hermano. Okay. Thank you for interceding. <clears throat> I will move forward with uh, hermano Gus. He's going to do the introduction. Yes, sir. Life. <clears throat> yeah, just like we did it a little while ago. <clears throat> oh. And uh, all right.
the same way we did it. <clears throat> Man of God, mm -hmm. we're moving forward to the book of Psalms, moving forward to our next chapter, in which chapter 58 for tonight, the title, Remaining Silent in the Need of Righteousness. Psalms 58 airs out of the psalmist's cry for justice because those who should those who should be speak speaking up choose to remain silent. Anyway. You didn't get it up? No, it's it moved on me. Oh, it moved on you? Yeah, hold on. My apologies. <clears throat> yeah, I think I spelled it wrong. It's arises. Psalm 58 arises out of the psalmist's cry for justice. 58 is a song. I mean, it's, you know, it's about the, um, It's about it's a cry for justice, you know. Porque Aquí está. You, you got it? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Those who should have been here and cho chose rather to be death to be dead, exercising injustice rather than justice. Psalmist was concerned about the righteousness and righteous rulers whom God has put into authority, but they are wicked, are dishonest, and unjust their judgments. Note verse one that reads, do you indeed speak righteousness, you silent ones? Do you judge uprightly, you sons of men? And the psalmist answers the question for the for the, the end verse two. He says, no, in your heart, you work wickedness. You weigh out the violence of your hands in the earth. The judge weighs the evidence of what people say before he says whether people have broken the rules or not, if the bad was heavier than the good, then people had broken the rules. Here, the judge judges themselves are bad and wicked. They do not weigh our justice for what is fair. They punish the good people that had not broken the rules. Those in authority are often corrupted are often corrupted. And, uh, and often corruptible, and we suffer because of it. These rules, those who rule as judges, those who write the laws do unjustly. People trust us and unjustly wrong us. They lie to and about us. The Psalmist David begins by challenging the majority in verse one. What the whole congregation knows is not necessary. so. The heart of man is an underground forge in which violence and wickedness is crafted. Wickedness begins in the womb. Evil men rejoice when they are born, so they start learning how to lie. They lie they, their lies are not harmless, but rather full of venom. So David is asking the Lord to bust out their teeth, <laughs> shatter their weapons. Lord, in verse 8, let <clears throat> them melt like a slug in the sun. Enough said. See you guys tonight. Praise the Lord. I gotta say amen. <laughs> that, was, that was good. <laughs> Man. Bust their teeth down, shatter their weapons. <laughs> I was reading a commentary earlier about Psalm 58, and it was saying that, you know, David's asking not that he, he, uh, you know, uh, get the wicked, but that God gets them. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like get of God. You know what I mean? I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold back, but you know what, Lord, I'm not gonna bust their teeth out. You bust their teeth. Out. <laughs> I, I can't like melt. I can't melt them like a snail, but you do it, Lord. <laughs> The, the way he thought. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Huh? 
Well, you know that, that the faith of David because he knew God could do. I mean, he when 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 he was facing the giant, and and I heard this song that all uh, the Israelites were shaking in their armor, while this little shepherd boy, chubby shepherd boy, went down there and said, "Who is this? This uh, that like this? You know, Philistine. uncircumcised Philistine talking <laughs> smack, you know." Talking long, you know what? Went down there, like he said, "Lord, you you bust their teeth out." <laughs> <laughs> this thinking is, is is different than what my thinking. Right, I want to thought, but it burn like a slug. <laughs> I know <laughs> <laughs> the slug and salt. Have you ever seen a slug and salt? Oh, oh man, a, all that like thing. Thing. <laughs> it foams up and stuff. Well, yeah, in Spanish, they're called babosos, right? <laughs> How do you I mean, know that? I mean, hey, I, 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 right? I thought they just I, called yeah, people I didn't, know that I didn't know that either. Is that what they're called, the slugs? Yeah, is that Adolfo, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm, and, all this uh, time, that's all it is? It's, yeah, the, uh, that word over there in Guatemala, in Guatemala, it's, it's not such a good word. They, they use it for a despective, uh, oh. despective word. Uh, but in Mexico, also, I think it's a little bit of offensive. Now, I'm not sure in Mexico. But yeah. in Guatemala, in Guatemala, it's a little bit of offensive. But it's just words, you know, the main different things in different countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to be careful because there's a couple words in slang. My dad didn't like me to speak slang. He's mijo, cuidado, because there's a word like, you know, a jacket. Mm -hmm. There was a slang word for jacket, but he goes, no, it's chamarra. Yeah. Because the other word means something else, kind of not, right. kind of not right. dirty. And, right. uh, and then, and then uh, there's another word that my dad used to always call me, and I thought it meant tough guy, but it means another word. Okay. Another like word. A, <laughs> like, a, like a donkey. You know a donkey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's a C a word. A J C A B R, and I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like tacos al carbón, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Man, my, my dad, my my dad's with the Lord now, but you know, my dad got uh, saved and, and accepted the Lord, and 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 he repented and he sobered up, you know, right, right before he passed on. Praise the Lord." Mm -hmm. But uh, God's good, amen, and merciful. Amen. But uh, yeah, my dad, I go, man, my dad was calling me that word. Mm -hmm. You know, wow, dad. <laughs> <laughs> we got, I'm going to talk to you about that when we go to heaven, dad. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> now, uh, these are heavy words. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> you know, they're heavy words. You know, I, I mean, I had to end it like that because it's basically where it's at. You know, there were unrighteous, there were wicked rulers, mm -hmm. the ones that should have been like the, like the introduction, right? Remaining mm -hmm. silent in the need for righteousness. That's pretty much where David's at. You know, David's experiencing this. I mean, he's experiencing what, what Paul what Paul spoke about. Because it took me to Romans 13 también. <clears throat> you know, I read Romans 13 one. You know, God puts puts these rulers in authority but but to bless the church and not to curse the church mm. you know for for the uh for the leading of of, of god's law morality morality you know like romans 13 right <clears throat> right uh, romans 13 this okay it says that um Romans 13, I mean, this, I mean, David acknowledges this, that God puts these guys in authority. Mm -hmm. well, the, Lord, the Lord speaks about it to, to, to listen to authority, like the, like, you know, presidents and all the people who are in charge of you, mm -hmm. to respect them, to honor them. You know, and David sees that. <clears throat> because you're talking to me about civil leaders. You're talking about those who yeah those, corrupt those who are who are appointed 
mm-hmm. appointed. Who well, God put them put them there, right? Because Romans thirteen, yeah. one, yeah. Read, you know Romans thirteen one. You're there, right, Adolfo? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, read. Yes, yeah, uh, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, See? for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever receives the authority receives receives the ordinance of God, and those who receive will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not to not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sore in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject not only because of the wrath, but also for conscience sake. I mean, that, I mean, you know, David acknowledges all that. Mm-hmm. 13 says right here because he knows that God puts puts them in authority he knows that God takes them down <clears throat> I mean that can take us to Daniel también <laughs> you know Nebuchadnezzar right he was very proud but very arrogant you know he went out there he straightened them out though huh he straightened them out right <laughs> <laughs> hey, made him eat in the uh, pastor G Jesus tells Pontius Pilate the same thing in, in John 19, 11, that you only have the authority because God gives it to you, you know? When he says, don't you know, Pontius Pilate tells him, what is like, hey, don't you know I have the authority to let you live or die? And the Lord tells him, the only reason why you got that, because God gives you, and, and these people, these, these, uh, Non-believers or these seasons or whether worldly people, they don't know what do you mean? God gives it to me. Yep. You know? Mm-hmm. Like like people like, what do you mean God gave me uh this job or God gave me my house or my car or God gave me, you know, my mm-hmm. my gift or my you know, people don't mm-hmm. understand, they don't comprehend, they think they do it themselves, or they're just you know, yeah, all that in a bag of chicharrones, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but that's, you know, that's why the um, that's why the psalmist uh, is not that he's tired of it. You know, he's not like saying, "Hey, you know what? I'm done with all these guys, man." You know, take them out because even in the womb, they they're they're already de- you know deciding to do wickedness. I mean, we could get into that from the end. But okay, so it's talking about those rulers, those governors, those those civil leaders are in authority, you know. But they're but what what's the deal with them? That they're corrupt, <clears throat> they're dishonest, and they're unjust in their judgments, and they have evil in their hearts, and hence they are quick to speak lies, and they are poisonous. They're poisonous and stubborn because of their wickedness. The psalmist delivers. Several curses upon the these evil men. The yeah. psalmist knows that they knows that when the wicked are punished, the righteous will rejoice. And when and men will say there is indeed a God that judges in the earth. Right? Psalm 58 is one of the strongest of the imprecatory psalms. Um, in verses six to eight, we have the curses. <clears throat> Here the psalmist is more caustic to his changes against the wicked than the preceding psalms. He uses strong language that many today would consider to be excessive or offensive. But think about it. I mean, here you have Psalm 58. And as we've been reading Psalm 58, the introduction, I mean, not the introduction, but the, 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 uh, the title here in Psalm 58 in my New King James Nelson Bible, they said, to the chief musician, Said to do not destroy and make them of David. I mean, so it, it continues with do not destroy. Like mm-hmm. we read 
week with Psalm 57. Mm-hmm. Right? But it's to the chief musician. Mm-hmm. You know, like we read Psalm 57 to the chief musician. So what, what is he talking about? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, this is to be sung in the congregation, in the church. Mm-hmm. Come on. But you're not going to find this hymn in the churches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, talk- I, I, but I, I sent uh, uh, on the thread, I sent uh, the psalm, you know, in song, you know, and they're singing it. And it's kind of, you know, I mean, you, you, you think about some of the songs, the worldly songs that are on, on the radio, you know, that they just had the Grammys, I think, you know, or whatever they are, the music awards. And they're, 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 they're all hailing Satan, basically. They're all, you know, singing about terrible things. So what's so terrible? But yet, if they sang this on the radio, that oh, wow, talking about violence, you know. Because that's what the non-believers will say, that God's violent and, you know, the Bible's all kinds of, yeah. That's the way the world is, you know, mm-hmm. violent and stuff like that. But, you know, yeah, but mom, imagine, are you okay? Yeah, but can you imagine singing this at the congregation in your church? <clears throat> Lord, bust their teeth, <laughs> right? Shatter their weapons. Let them melt like a slug in the sun. Mm-hmm. So, purgatory psalms, right? This is uh, Psalm 58 is one of the seven in purgatory psalms. The others are Psalm 6, 35, 69, 83, 109, and 137. And we're going to go through all those. <laughs> but a numerous of purgatory psalm to imprick it means to invoke evil upon or curse one's enemies. Right, King David is is the psalmist. King David is the psalmist most associated with imprecatory verses. Right, he uses he you he often uses language like let their way let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord pursue them, and let and let uh, here in this very psalm it says break their teeth in their mouth, oh God break their break out their fangs. Of the young of the young lions, you know, you know, think about the fangs, right? <clears throat> and break out their fangs. And that's not just to you know to eat, <laughs> but it's to tear, mm-hmm. to devour. <clears throat> right? Mm-hmm. Take their strength away. About a lion, he's talking about just devouring them like with their fangs. Mm-hmm. You know. <clears throat> I mean, you think of a lion, como común lion, you know, they just like pulling on the meat and stretching it and just devouring it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why, you know, it, it puts you, the, it gives you that picture of, of Nebuchadnezzar perfectly. I mean, we spoke about Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> <clears throat> you know, because he was a proud man. He was like one of these rulers. Mm. He was a wicked ruler, bro. He tried to do it with Daniel. Put him in the lion's den. And then you have Daniel chapter 3 with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Right? <clears throat> Amen. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't honoring God at all. And he didn't care about morality. Let alone for the church. Let alone for Israel. Mm. For the people of God. <clears throat> but what do, you have, what do you have here in Psalm 58? You know, once again, it says, it says, do not, it says the chief, to the chief musician, do not, do not destroy. And we saw that in 1 Samuel 26, where David said, do not destroy. For he's the, to he, to Hushai, do not destroy him. For he's the Lord's anointed. How can we go against the Lord's anointed? Mm. So you're talking about Saul. We're talking about Saul and all, all the uh, civil leaders are coming, coming up against David. Right? That's why it says, and that's why I titled the message, remaining, remaining silent in the need for righteousness. Right? Psalm 58 arises out of the psalmist's cry for justice. Because those who should, have, should be speaking up chose to remain silent. Those who should have been hearing chose to be, chose to be deaf in their ears. Exercising injustice 
rather than justice. The psalmist is cons was concerned about the righteousness and righteous rulers whom God has put into authority, but they are wicked and they are dishonest and unjust in their judgment. And we're talking about, if we're talking about Saul, bro, we're talking about the church. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Come on. Unjust. Yeah. Right? In the church. Exercising injustice rather than justice. And, you know, the one of the reasons that they came up against David is because they voted homeboy. Right. Because, you know, they said, okay, because, you know, he's seeking, he's seeking a conspiracy against you. We read that about him, Ahimelech, the priest. It was, it was in my pocket. So, oh, you're coming up against, you know, why are you coming up against me? You gave him, you gave him, uh, you gave him the showbread, you gave him the bread, the oh. holy bread, and you gave him David's, uh, Goliath's sword, right? The treacherous observer of Doeg. Mm. And ratted him out and said, hey, I saw Ahimelech. You know, pray for him. Pray for homeboy right here. Mm -hmm. he gave him a weapon and he gave him some comida. The treacherous observer, El Doeg también. You know? Uh -huh. Those who should have helped him rose up against him. Mm. So the, it continues with Psalm 58. Um, but yeah, we'll get into it when we read Psalm 58. Because there's um, the, the one of the verses that's in question is verse 3. Uh, verse 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. Psalm 58. You want to take that, Richard? Amen. Amen. Uh, verse 3 from the New King James Version. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Verse 4. Their position is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf cobra that stops its ear. You know, but some of the commentaries, <clears throat> they go against that. <laughs> right? Because here, I'm going to read this commentary to you. It says, okay, it says this, is not, this is not proof that the people are born with original sin, a sinful nature, or a total inherited, or total inherited depravity. It is literally impossible for an infant to speak lies. Right? <laughs> it says the oh. song. Yeah, go ahead. But I mean, how can it if it doesn't speak? Uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> right? You know, how, how can they say, well, yeah, okay, if it doesn't speak lies, does an infant doesn't speak, he said, nah, nah, nah. you know. <laughs> so I mean, how could they, how could they um how could they uh like say, you know, like um try to justify what they're saying? It doesn't make sense. But a child no sin right away when doing wrong and right. You know? Don't do that. Hey! Why do they start crying? Because they know they're in trouble. Before they could even say, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> right? Yeah, so uh, can we find out who who's, who said, who wrote that? Who wrote that about does it, uh, if it's, does it, if it's big lies? Somebody, that, somebody, somebody, one of those uh, rulers, right? One of those uh, corrupt but rulers. The, it's one of the outlines that I that I look up to to do study. Yeah, and but, it's, but it's, go ahead, Pastor. I'm sorry. It's based on Psalm 58. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it, you said it's a commentary. But didn't they say something about because uh, they says right here uh, in verse three, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Because are we born with the original sin? Don't we come into a world? It's full of we, sin. We're born in sin. Yeah. So, According so that to scripture, yes. Yeah. So that yes. commentary is saying, like, contra it's contrary to what we know as we're all born sinners. You know, we, we were born into a world Ad, that's full of sin. Adam, Adam and Eve were the only ones born perfect right, until amen. they sinned. And once mm -hmm. they sinned, the rest of the world sinned. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. As one, 
Yeah, right. As the scripture says, as one came in, like the because so the second Adam was born Jesus, yeah, right? He's the second exactly. Adam. Exactly. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. He was so, the perfect one. Yeah, man. What what so, else does that commentary say, Pastor? No, no, no. I'm just I'm just I'm just referring to, to verse three, right? It says the wicked uh -huh. are estranged from the womb. Uh-huh. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. True statement. Estranged. The wicked are estranged from the womb. And you know, one of the one of the uh, uh como se dice, the, the reference to that is Isaiah 48 8. <laughs> you know, Isaiah 48 8 says, I knew you would become a, a transgressor from the womb. I mean, those mm -hmm. are bien, you know, there's a uh -huh. like, man, those are fighting words, but they're you know, but they're purgatory songs. Yeah, but, you. I'm sorry, but you know, there's a phrase like uh, you were you were a transgressor from the womb. You're born a transgressor from the womb in Isaiah. But like you never heard, you've heard the term. We might even said it. Uh, are you ready? Shoot, I was born ready. <laughs> <laughs> right? But look at it. You never hear you never you never hear anybody say, "Ah, oh, you liar! I was born a liar." <laughs> mm -hmm. Evil man, you evil man! I was born evil. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true, hermano. I like that. Um, but Isaiah 48, 8. If you guys are there. Isaiah yeah. 48, 8. You guys want to take that verse? It says, surely you did not hear. Surely you did not know. Surely from long ago your ear was not open. For I knew that you will deal very treacherously and were called a transgressor. From the womb. Notice that. Mm -hmm. Surely from long ago your ears were not open, for I knew that you would deal very treacherously and were called a transgressor from the womb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the womb. Mm -hmm. And I know if Lalo had his ears in here, he'd be taking us to Romans 9. <laughs> <laughs> No, and also, also the Lord did say, you know, to us, uh, He knows us from the womb, even before we were born, even right. from our mother's womb. In uh, Psalm uh, 139, also explains in there that uh, He knows all of our days, even before there was none of them yet. You mm -hmm. know, He has all them counted. So he, uh, yeah, he separated that. He separates us all from the very beginning of our yep. path. Amen. Most definitely. It speaks it in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 9, verse 24, too. It says, You have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. Deuteronomy, what? Uh, Chapter 9, verse 24. Read it again, hermano. Uh, it says, uh, You have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. Mm -hmm. From the day I knew you? Yeah, speak, uh, in reference from uh, uh, what, what we're, we were reading in uh, verse... Isaiah. Uh, yeah, Isaiah, uh, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, once again, it says, right, you would deal treacherously, very treacherously, and we're called a transgressor from the womb. So God called him transgressor from the womb. <laughs> mm -hmm. and the, Isaiah 46, 3 and 8, 2, because it references Isaiah 48, references uh, Psalm 58, 3. <laughs> you know, they, they coincide together, you know, the same, speaking the same. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go mm -hmm. astray as they are born, speaking lies. Mm -hmm. So they're speaking lies. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But here's here's uh, here's what um, what David says in Psalm twenty two. What's up, Big Randy? So Psalm twenty two, verse nine and ten. Psalm 22? Uh, Psalm 22. 
uh, verses 9 through 10. Notice the relationship that David had with the Lord in the womb, in Psalm 22. Really? Psalm 22, verses 9 and 10. I know we read Psalm 22, because we already passed that one. Amen, <laughs> right? <laughs> the David had. In the womb. In the womb. Um, Who was David's mom? It was, Jesse was his dad. Who was his mom? Um, Did I mention Jesse's wife? It was, a, it was a, like a one-night stand <laughs> was something <laughs> like that. A one night stand, huh? Like she was not mentioned. She's not mentioned. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Not, baby mama. She's not baby. My name. <laughs> only men were mentioned. The only time a wife, the woman was mentioned was like Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene, Esther. But people that did something that did something before the Lord. Yeah. Well, we don't know the woman, uh the the who was it? The, the woman the, at the, the well. First, the first the first evangelist, the woman at the well, or yeah. The, the woman that bled for 12 years, but yet he said that she would always be. Oh, no, it was the woman that wiped uh, uh, her, her the feet uh, or anointed the feet of, of Jesus. Jesus, of Jesus. With, uh, yeah, that she would be her remembered. Well, dried, it, dried his feet yeah. with her hair. Uh -huh. He does mention them, but, but they got to they, they have to have done something. Mm. Uh, very, very uh, positive. Mm -hmm. Psalm 22, what, what verse, uh, Pastor, were you talking about? Psalm 22, verses 9 and 10. Okay. But you are he who took me out of the womb. Verse 9, you made me trust while on my mother's breast. Verse 10, I was cast upon you from birth, from my mother's womb. You have been my God. That's King David, huh? Praise be to God. Notice that relationship that he had with God in the womb. Yeah. A covenant. A child of the most high God. No wonder, no wonder Saul was jealous, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I hate Saul. And that's well, what we see. Saul, Saul just killed thousands. David killed 10,000. Right? <laughs> Ooh, he, he didn't like that when they were seeing it. It's true. <laughs> It was a song saying about it. Right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember watching a movie. I, I was watching a movie about King David. It's pretty cool. You know, it was pretty accurate as far as scripture goes, you know. Old old movie. Forget the actors, but well, it's a true scripture. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, that's just like saying, you know, uh Saul's good, but David is the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's basically what they said. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that that's where is the where David became his enemy <clears throat> because of the women singing that song. And, and you know, you know what? Where, where is it, Pastor Two? Because I'm thinking that okay, if he was like anointed and blessed, even in the womb. I mean, we all were were, were blessed in the womb. I mean, God knew us in our mother's womb. He, he you know, he had. He has uh, blessings. We were blessed before the foundation of the earth and all this stuff. But there's something about uh, what was it? Where uh, I don't know if it's a New Testament or Old Testament. Something about David calling Jesus Lord, my Lord. But yet Jesus comes from the seed of David. You know. Well, he said, yeah. "My Lord," right? <clears throat> Huh? Lord, my God. He said, my, you're my king, my Lord, and my God. Amen. And, and it's like, he, in a sense, Jesus is a descendant of David's seed, right? Through through Joseph? No. Joseph. no or through, through, through Mary. Yeah. Through Mary. And yeah, not through Joseph. <laughs> 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 Whoops. Mm -hmm. Oops. There. Ed, edit that. There. Edit that, Pastor. Edit Hold, that on. One up. <laughs> Hold on. And there it was a miraculous uh, 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 pregnancy. Conception. Yeah, conception. Yeah. Because yeah. it was not, he just took her so they wouldn't 
Stoner. So he right, married right. him. But yeah. I, you know, that was a miraculous thing through Jesus Christ himself, God himself. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the Holy Spirit came upon him. And uh, that happened. Amen. Okay, so verse 9 again, right? <clears throat> Psalm 22. Amen. Or, but you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust. You made me trust while on while on my mother's breast. Right? It says you cast me upon you from birth, from my mother's womb. You have been my I mean, I'm just repeating that so you can feel the weight of that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You made me trust while on my mother's breast, right? But you are you are he who took me out of the womb. Verse 10 says, I was cast upon you from birth, from my mother's womb, from my mother's womb. Mm. So David was still in his mother's bansa right there, in his belly, her hey, belly. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can say the same thing about ourselves with our moms, too, because we were chosen by the Lord. Right, right, you know? amen. So we, I, I mean, all the characters that we found in the scriptures, Moses, uh, Joseph, Abraham, and all of the other big guys in, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the New Testament, are there to teach us, you know, so that we can see who God is. And uh, it's, uh, it was all of these books were written for us today in, uh, to show us that there were men just like us, like, like we are, you know. And, and if they were chosen by the Lord from their mother's womb, I mean, so are we. Man. That's mind-blowing. You know, that's mind-blowing that mm -hmm. we are, that the Lord knows us from the very beginning. I, I mean, when since we were like... A, uh, I, I heard a pastor say something, the, uh, a, a, a Mexican guy told another Christian brother, you look, you look like a feto, you know, like a, you know what feto is, a fetus, you look like, you look oh. like a fetus, and he said that the, the other guy got a little bit offended, but the pastor told him, you should be a flutter, because the, the word fetus uh, you know, in Spanish means capullo. You know, uh, you know what capullo is like a little, uh, little flower, kind of a, like a little tiny baby flower. You know, that's what fetus means in in the mm. in the original language, according to this pastor. And and so that's even even the word uh, uh, there is such a beautiful thing. It, is, it, it it declares something awesome, something beautiful. And that's what we are. We are little capullos, you know. I mean, we're <laughs> right there in our mother's womb. That's awesome. Amen. That's awesome Amen. Thing. Yeah. Mm. That's the, that's that's a that's a beautiful uh, I say uh, description, you know, of that you know, beautiful, Adolfo. I like yeah. that, man. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's good. Hold on yeah. one second, guys. Mm. Okay, so let's go to um have another scripture here. <laughs> cool. Amen. Let's go. Uh, you know, once again, before we read, before we fully get into Psalm 58, <clears throat> but it's in reference to uh verse 10 here in Psalm 58. Mm -hmm. Donna Randy, you gonna follow us? What's up, Randy? What's up, my brother? Toilet break, bro. I appreciate it, man. Got the snacks in hand. Amen. Who's going to read verse 10? <laughs> you guys go ahead. I'm going to follow, okay? I don't want to read. <coughs> Let Gus read. Gus, Gus, Gus just left the building. Oh yeah, nice. There's uh, Adolfo. Uh, I can I can read it if you want. 
Uh, verse 10 no. or something. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I could study with the, the I can read it. You got it, Randy? First, um, Psalm 58. Yes, sir. Verse 10. I'll tell Mama to give you a call. I'll tell Mama to give you a call, okay? Bye. Bye. You're already there, huh? Yes, sir. All right. You want me to start us off then, right? No, just read uh just read uh, Psalm 58, 10. All right. Praise the Lord. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. I mean, that's a harsh statement, también. That's but really it, harsh. But it's poetry, bro. It's poetry. So it's not It's not really saying that, hey, you know what? You mean it's poetry emotion? <laughs> Blood emotion. <laughs> you grew up in <laughs> 80. <laughs> doesn't sound like it too much. <laughs> no, it did sound pretty to me. <laughs> Let me read it again. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Mm. Right. Uh, seems like a, a bad hit right there. <laughs> I mean, that's why it's called imprecatory songs, <clears throat> because some of these, they're hard sayings, bro. Uh-huh. But, the, you know, for the righteous to rejoice when he sees the vengeance of the wicked, being, you know, when you see that come to pass. And it's going to come to pass. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It, it is. It makes me think of like, you know, when people go, man, you know, how long is this? Like uh, in Revelation, it says that the saints cry out to when, when is the, you know, our blood going to be avenged, you know? And like when we see the corruption in this world, through many governments and the wicked, evil people prospering, like, man, why do they get away with how, you know, when when's it going to happen? When you know they all go down and it's all exposed, I'm sure we're gonna go not like ah eh, that's what you get, but basically it's like all right, the all that wrong, all that all that evil they done and thinking they can mock God, they're gonna pay. They're gonna pay, and we're gonna see that. And that's what I was talking to Big Randy about earlier, before before we came onto the study. Uh -huh. um, Read it. And I believe it's going to encourage you guys. <clears throat> but, you know, like we're talking about, como dijo Richard right now. And that's where I came out with, I mean, that's why part of my introduction, it says, remaining silent and the need for righteous righteousness. The Psalm 58 arises out of the psalmist cry for justice because those who should have been speaking up chose to remain silent. Those who should have been hearing chose rather to be death. Exercise justice rather than justice. The, the psalmist was concerned about righteousness and righteous rulers whom God put into authority. And like you questioned, like Hermano Richard just said, hey, Lord, when are you going to take care of this? Right? Mm -hmm. And here is what I was sharing with Big Randy earlier. <clears throat> I was in Jeremiah chapter 12. You know, because Jeremiah chapter 12, Jeremiah questions the Lord. And he questions the Lord like this in Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1 says, reads, You will be will, will you be righteous, Lord, even if I bring a case against you? Yet I wish to contend with you. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why do the treacherous live at ease? But notice he's talking to the Lord here. <clears throat> right. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1, once again, it says, you, it says, will you be righteous, Lord, even if I bring a case against you? Yet I wish to contend with you. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? And why do the treacherous live at ease? Mm -hmm. 
That's heavy. Yeah. And he's questioning the Lord here. <clears throat> the prophet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Righteous are you? It says, Will you be righteous, Lord? Even if I bring a case against you? You talk with you about your judgments. Yeah. And you know, uh, like I see in my mind, you know, like, like, you know, the phrase, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> well, the longer, the longer these wicked yeah. prosper, the more blind they are and the more. Uh, uh, like, um, you know, kind of prideful they are that thinking they're going to get away with it. They really think that nothing's going to happen. They really think that their evil side is going to win. And, you know, they're so blinded by, by their uh, wickedness. And God's allowed them to, get, I guess, uh, not prosper, but allowed them to go on I guess until that day because it's going to be a terrible day terrible day you know it's 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 God's will that none should perish but he knows there's going to be many that perish he knows who's gonna who's gonna uh never repent just just the same as we be blessed in the in our mother's womb and and so like how Adolfo was saying what a beautiful what a beautiful, uh, you know, perception to of a baby and the brilliance and the amaz amazing, you know, uh, process of birth. Analogy. Yeah, analogy. There you go. It's a good word. Thank you, Brother Randy. You know, analogy of that. And be yet look at the opposite side of that, of these people who are never going to repent, but yet they're given grace. They're given mercy. They're given the opportunity and time to repent. But the ugliness of that, you know, ooh, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's, it's sad. It's sad. It's sad. If our God, who is love, and he, and he and the love he has, he's given it to us, and we can love our enemies and pray for our enemies. I mean, it's sad. It's really sad, these people. And you can look at how wicked they've been, the terrible, evil, unspeakable acts that they've committed against saints, against people and children. It's so sad. But yet, we have to love them and give them a chance. But yet, I, 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 I hate wicked. I hate wickedness. I hate wickedness, man. I hate wickedness. And I guess that's why when it says in that scripture that, they're going to rejoice when the wicked, you know, get dealt with and wash their feet in their blood. You know, we could kind of understand that. Like you said, it's 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 poetry. Or maybe like Randy said, poetry in motion or whatever. But, you know, I kind of look at the. Um, the homeless, you know, <clears throat> I mean, they. They're homeless, you know, and. uh they get people come and they feed them and they they clothe them and they give them money and and they're doing a lot of stuff but they're not willing to turn away a lot of them should I say I'm not judging them I'm just saying there's a lot of them I've been we've been down Skid Row many times you know and it's it's and they rejoice when you bring them stuff but Hey, you know, Jesus loves you, man. And they end up grabbing their loot and leaving and they don't want to yeah. hear, don't want to yeah. hear the word, you know? I mean, I remember, uh, you know, going down the barrio and uh, having free food and you know, my whole truck was full of food. And we go over there and feed, feed them just, hey, we got free food here, you know, gratis, you know? Comida gratis, you know, and everyone comes out and get boxes and boxes of food. But then they roll, they leave. And then their sister comes back and she gets a box and then she leaves. And then the brother comes back and gets, but they're not, yeah. they listen to the word. They don't want to hear what God has, was trying to say to them, you know, and it's like, there's not even a thank you at times, you know, and you just wonder, you know, what, what, what do you got in your mind, man? You know, like, 
you, you, you take all the good, yet you don't want to, you know, or should I say you take all the milk, but you don't want to hear the meat, you know, kind of thing, you know? I don't know. Well, it's kind of like the statement that says, that says they, want the, they want the blessing of the cross, but not the control of the cross. Mm. <clears throat> right? Yeah. Yeah. Lord, just bless me, but no, don't tell me what. Don't tell me how to live my life, man. <laughs> right? Um, that, that's it. You know, when I when I was on the street and they offered me a place to go and you know get away from here and get my life, I didn't look at it like that. I look at it like you know what? I'm gonna be in. I, I, I'm gonna be having rules and you know program and all that. But in reality, like you get busted and you you're not free. You gotta do. You eat when they tell you to eat. You shower when they tell you to. Shower. You know you don't have really the freedom and i was in a invisible you know people like we're saying randy you, you know they're they're in the invisible bondage that they don't really see they're not free you know you the sun sets free is free indeed but Amen. they're in an invisible bondage the world is enslaved to sin and enslaved to their comfort in the world you know uh the, the, the lies the deception the you know hey let me have my blessing and no, no, you know what? I, I got it. I'm sorry, man. I appreciate it, but I got to go. Go where? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? I got something for you right here that can just free you, you know? But it's not, it's surrendering to the Almighty God, submitting and surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Like you said, exactly, Pastor. They want the blessings of the cross, but not the control of it. You know, you know what's... Um... I was uh, trying to minister to this person once and um, they were gay, you know, and they let me know what they thought, what they thought about. They let me know why they became gay, why they became doing this, why be, they became doing that. And I, I said, well, when you're finished, I want to tell you something. Okay. And they're going, yeah, yeah. And after they're finished, I was getting ready to open up, you know, but they said to me, I don't want to hear anything that comes from a book. Mm. And I'm like, and they, they knew exactly what they were telling me. I will not listen to anything that comes from a book. They don't know that book. And all I could sit, all I could do was sit there and listen to them and just say, you know. <laughs> They're trapped, man. Yeah, yeah, like. They let me know how they feel, why they feel the way they do, why they act the way they do, why they do what they do. But they were not willing to listen to me yeah, talk about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for them and what he's going to do for them when, when he comes and this and that. She said, I, I will not listen to anything that comes from a book. Mm. I said, well, I've got some tapes over here. You want to listen to a tape? <laughs> right. You know? But, you know, it's just... It testimonies just, it, it did yeah not work out and they walked away from me it was one of yeah, those they, she they have their mind made up they're 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 set in their ways they're they're, they're trapped you know they're what, ensnared. What, a, what a lost yeah. case you know i look at that and i feel so sorry because you you don't understand what you're doing yeah. you really don't understand what you're doing here because when jesus comes you're either going or you're staying or you're going somewhere else, but you're not going up. You're probably going down. Mm. You know, you got to think about this real good. Mm. You know, do you want to burn forever? I mean, the Bible distinctly says, in complete darkness, burning forever. And never stop burning. You're right. not going to burn and crumble to a, a, a charred body and, and then die and be forever nothing. No, you're going to be alive, burning forever in complete darkness. Yeah, feeling everything, feeling everything, you know, Always. experiencing everything. Always. Your, your mind knowing the, oh, man. I mean, I, 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 that's why I carry around, I carry around a lighter. Because when I'm ministering to someone, I want, I want them to understand. I light my lighter up and I say, put your hand over here. And I said, is that, is it getting hot? He says, yeah. I said, well, close your eyes real tight. Close his eyes real tight. And I light my lighter up and I'm burning his hand or his finger or what, his arm or whatever. 
just to let him feel the heat. And I just said, figure this out. In complete darkness, forever, forever, and ever, and never, ever, just die and be nothing. You'll be alive in complete darkness, burning forever and ever and ever. That's what hell's going to be like. Do you want to go there? A lot of them go, no. Would you like to live in paradise? Yes. All you got to do is ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. All you got to do is believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. Oh, no, no, I don't believe that. You know, and so, you know, you're either for me or you're against me. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Go ahead, Pastor. Sorry. I'm not preachable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when God speaks, you don't need nobody's, you don't need nobody's uh, approval. <laughs> Amen. Right? I just Amen. want to make sure I, I don't get too carried away on a big conversation. That's all. <laughs> no, but here in, here, in Jer here in Jeremiah, Jeremiah, once again, chapter 12, verse 1 says, Will you be will you be righteous, Lord? Even if I bring a case against you, yet I wish to con contend with you. Why does the wicked prosper? And why do the treacherous live at ease? And notice verse 2 says, you planted, you planted them, and they have taken root. They have grown and produced fruit. You are ever on their lips, but far from their conscience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew 15, 8, right? <clears throat> These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are what? Far from me. But look, but look what it says here. <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, I'm going to read my, my um, you know, what I shared with Big Randy earlier, right? Mm -hmm. It says, Jeremiah <clears throat> applied a wider perspective, useful in apologetics, <clears throat> but God, but God is who he is. His righteousness is not measured by the complaints people bring against him out of their own personal circumstances. We might not understand how God is righteous, and we can and we can even bring a case or demand explanation from him. But since God is in charge of the universe and not us. It is useless to suppose that any case we bring against him will prove him unjust. I'll read it again because that speaks volume right there. Mm -hmm. It says again, it says, because God is who he is, his, his righteousness is not measured by the complaints people bring against him out of their own personal circumstances. <laughs> We might not understand how God is righteous and we can even bring a case against him or demand an explanation from him. But since God is in charge of the universe and not us, it is useless to suppose that we can bring any case against him. Against him will prove him unjust. And it's true, Bo. Right? Very true. I mean... We might not understand how God preaches, and we can even bring a case against him, right? Like, Jer like, like Jeremiah right here says, here's his complaint in verse 1. He says, will you be righteous, Lord, even if I bring a case against you? Yet I wish to contend with you. Why does the, the way of the wicked prosper? Kind of provokes you to kind of like, Father, forgive me, you know what I mean? Forgive me for going that direction ever with you. You know, I mean, we always question God, you know, why this or why that, you know, I, I almost feel like just saying, Lord, forgive me, you know, I'm sorry I went there and help me not to do that again, you know. Why am I pointing the finger at him when I got three on me, you know. Right. Let, well, let's take, uh, let's take, um, Let's take Jeremiah. Let's read, read chapter 12. Okay. 1 through 10. <clears throat> Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Yet let me talk with you about your judgments. 
Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? You have planted them, yes. You have taken root. They grow, yes. They bear fruit. You are near in their mouth, but far from their mind. But you, O Lord, know me. You have seen me, and you have tested my heart towards you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. Verse 4. Híjole. <laughs> Are you there, Bigas? Yes, sir. A ver. ¿Qué pasó? Verse 4. Oh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 12. Jeremiah 12. Huh? Jeremiah 12, verse 4. Yes. I had it. You there, or we'll give it to Adolfo? No, give it to somebody else. I, I can't. Oh, I found it. I found it. Oh, man. <laughs> well, Richard. <laughs> I'm just staring at it. I'm just staring at the pages right now. On the uh, it's right before songs. That's it. Okay. Okay. Chapter 12, verse 4. 12, verse 4, bro. Oh, How long shall the land mourn and the her herbs of every field wither? For the wickedness of them that dwell therein, the beasts are consumed, and the birds, because they said, he shall not see our last end. How far? Uh, take uh, uh, to six. Okay. If thou, by, verse five, if thou hast run with the footmen and they have weary, wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trustest, they wearied thee, then how wilt Thou do to the swelling of Jordan. For even thy brethren and house and the house of thy father, even they have dwelt treacherously with thee. Yea, ye have called a multitude after thee. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto thee. Hmm. Right. A ver, hermano Richard, take it. Uh, uh, verse 7. 7 through 10. Amen. Verse 7. I have forsaken my house. I have left my heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. Verse 8. My heritage is to me like a lion in the forest. It cries out against me. Therefore, I have hated it. Verse 9. My heritage is to me like a speckled vulture. The vulture... All around are against her. Come, assemble all the beasts of the field. Bring them to devour. Mm. I mean, that's this, a the, ten. The 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 thing where where uh, I left off, where it says, "Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto thee, mm -hmm. good things unto thee." In other words, they probably talk good in front of you, but behind your back. They talk back and bad about you. Mm -hmm. Just don't believe them. Mm -hmm. Say that again, bro. They talk good things about you. And they, 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 they're they talking, they call them all to love to thee and believe them not. Though they speak fair, which means good things, though they speak good words unto you, 
don't believe them. Because they're just talking good in front of you, but they're talking behind your back. Right. Yeah, it, it says right there, do not believe them, even though they speak smooth words. They're yeah, a smooth, you're, you're, a smooth you're talker, smooth yeah. operator, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Food what you words, man, like peanut butter, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you have Jeremiah's complaint, <clears throat> right? Verses verses one uh, through four, mm -hmm. and then you have the Lord's response, verses five through ten. Uh huh. But you know, once again, it says, um, "Yeah." Well, they call it Emmanuel Gus, right? It says, uh, verse 6, he was referring to verse 6. Right. Here in Jeremiah chapter 12, in my home, Bible says this. It says, even, even, even your brothers, your own father's household, even they were treacherous to you. Even they have cried out loudly after you. But do not, do not, do not have confidence in them, though they speak well of you. Verse 7, I have abandoned my house. I have deserted my inheritance. I have given the love of my life into the hand of her enemies. <laughs> Verse 8, it says, My inheritance has acted towards me like a lion in the forest. She has warred against me. <clears throat> Therefore, I hate her. Mm. That's the fun bubble. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yours. Mine just says, my, my just says have, I hated it. Mm -hmm. and, so yeah, mine says too, New King James. Either way, the Lord says, I hate her. Right? But the, here, here it says that the, it says, how could the Lord say, I hate, he hated his own chosen people? The prophet used a strong language to communicate that God's attitude towards Judah had changed as a result of the Judeans' disdain for him. They could expect his actions to reflect that to reflect that change it is typical of biblical writers to express emphasis with extreme but notice what it says it says the prophet used a strong language to communicate that god's attitude towards judah had changed as a result of the judeans disdain for him mm. Mm. talking about judah but that's why I wanted to read verse 11. <laughs> that's, no, verse 10 and verse 11, because I stopped at 9, Pastor. But you read verse 10 and verse 11, it, it's sad, man. You know, these how, how, how the Lord talks about how the people have, you know, kind of disrespected and just not and take it for granted. And just It says it make his vineyard a desolate place, you know. You look at a beautiful, you, you say, say one of us have land, a beautiful place. Ranch, you know, and we we we, we give it to to what, what we give it to one one another, but don't take care of it, and it turns into just a, you go look at it. And it's ijuela. Look at it. What happened? You know, it was so beautiful. And look at it. I mean, that's what that's what we've done to the word. What we've done to the world. You know, they not stop watering it. Come on, somebody. They right, stop girls? watering it. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta water yourself in the word. You gotta water yourself in prayer. You gotta yeah, water yourself you, in, yeah. In, don't just, yeah, don't just wade, but jump in it. You know, mm -hmm, yeah. Re refresh yourself and 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 and, and drink, swim in it. Drink the the living well as the waters. You know, it says I'm gonna read verse ten. Many rulers have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. Verse eleven. They have made it desolate. Desolate. It mourns to me. The whole land is made desolate because no one takes it to heart. See? Man. Yeah. But then, yeah. even so, all of that, bro, Pastor Chuck says this. God still talks. God still talked of Israel as the dearly beloved of his soul. Oh, the love that God has for man. He won't let go in spite of their evil, in spite of their broken covenant, and in spite of their failure. He still loved them. In spite of all of that. 
That's that that's God's will that no one should perish, especially his jewel, especially his 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 beloved, you know, uh, Jewish people, man. That's peace. Well, that, well, that's that's that, that's why we have a chance right now, because he they let him down. So he Come went on. out to us. He went out to the people that he wasn't talking to. And that's us. Yeah. And we yeah. and we we're we get it. And we're not I'm not saying we're perfect in it, but we get it more than they are right now right now they're blinded they're in their little world now he's the bible says he even he says i'm gonna i'm gonna blind you guys for a while and he does he he he, he covers it they don't know it they don't see it no more not the way they that the way we see it mm -hmm. he gave it to us he handed it to us Dude, it's it's like, like we're like the chip we're like the stepchild yeah, but the stepchild that, that, that appreciates that. appreciates their their father, you know, yeah. their stepfather, and like the lady said, you know, to Jesus about the crumbs, the dogs eating the crumbs from the master's table, and he he was that touched him, that moved him when she yeah. said that. What could he yeah. say? You know, just and just like when 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 uh, just give I me mean, the crumbs. Yeah. Jesus would talk about the Jewish people, like the what the leadership, not the Jewish people, like like. Oh, brother uh, Randy was saying that that's he never gives up on his Jewish children, but there are the leadership like we're talking about these corrupt, wicked leadership. You know, the 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 Pharisees, Sadducees, where he called them a brood of vipers. Jesus called them that when he said that they're the, uh, the synagogue of Satan. You no, know, I mean those ones. I don't know about them. He's he's not gonna forget them, but he yeah. has blinded them. It's in scripture. Yeah. Yeah, it's in scripture. He blinds them and he gives it over to us, the rest of the world. And there's Gentiles. a lot. Of, I mean, there's Chinese Christians, there's Mexican Christians, there's white Christians, there's Amen. Vietnamese Christians. There's there's a lot of them now. So, God, yeah. but they, but but if you go to the to the Jewish nation, they're not they're not there like that. They're right. still God's not gonna forget them. I know that. Because they're his. Yeah. But he blinded him. There's he'll, a lot of he'll open the right. I believe he'll open the eyes again. I, I haven't yeah. seen that, but I, I, yeah. I, I know he will. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of, uh, like Nicodemus, there's a lot of uh, Jewish people that worship in secret. They don't want to be, you know, uh, they don't want to be kicked out of the synagogue or they don't want to be shunned, you know, but they worship, they know Jesus is the true Messiah. You know. Amen. That was good, guys. But Praise Adolfo, have Adolfo finish it off. Uh, 12 through um, 17. 12 to 17, okay. It, goes, uh, it says in verse 12, the plunderers have come on, <laughs> on all the desolate heights in the wilderness. For the sword of the Lord shall devour from one end of the land to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. They have sown wheat but reap thorns. They have put themselves to pain but do not profit. But be ashamed of you harvest because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Verse 14. Thus says the Lord, against all my evil neighbors who touch the inheritance which I have called my people Israel to inherit, behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. Then it shall be, after I have plucked them out, that I will return and have compassion on them See? and bring them back okay. on anyone to his inheritance, anyone to his inheritance and everyone to his land. And it shall be if they will learn carefully the ways of my people to swear by my name as the Lord lives, as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then they shall be established in the midst of my people. But if they do not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy the nation, says the Lord. That nation. 
Mm-hmm. Mm, man. See what I'm talking about? Same mm-hmm. say exactly what I said, but mm-hmm. very well said right there. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it reminds me too of Second Chronicles 7 14. Yes. For mm-hmm. my people call by my name, turn Amen. from their wicked ways. Yes, and seek my only, face. There's only two nations in the world that are called by God's name. And that's Israel and the United States of America. Because we are called by God's name. We are his people. God built this country through the Ten Commandments that God, God's law gave to Moses. And we are, the Lord used the United States and keep on using it to send all the 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 uh, gospel to the whole world, all of the nations of the world, through his uh, missionaries that he sent from many places. And, you know, he lifted up uh, people like uh, Billy Graham. He lifted lift up people like many other uh, men and women that gave up their lives in order for them to go and preach the gospel to all of the other nations of the world. And there is no nation in the world right now that I know that don't have a little remnant that knows God, that has God. And that's what the Lord wants. He's looking for his people. He's looking for his children. You know, he's not looking for the whole world. He would love to save the whole humanity but he won't. The Lord Jesus Christ said it himself, you know, that they brought it as the way to destruction and the way of salvation is very narrow, you know, because not everybody wants to carry the responsibility to have someone uh, on top of them. They want to be their own captains in their own uh, boats, their own boats and ships, and, and they just... Uh, you know, don't want to listen. They are being deceived, especially in the days that we're living in right now. Yes, we are. Uh, you know, Israel is still alive. Israel right now is like a, a, a football, soccer game. Israel is in La Banca. You know, they just resting and there. We're seeing the Christian playing the, the partido, you know, the, the game. We as Christians are playing the game right now, but at the end, Israel is going to come back to play again. They're going to be the main players again in the last in the last days because God is going to deal with them again. Back then, when the Antichrist will come and shows up in the world, you know, when when that time will come, and might be soon sooner than we might expect it. We don't know. That, we don't know the yeah, time. That's when, they, that's when they turn and say that they were, that he was the real one back then, or for their, what their, their people said, because that's when they, they opened their eyes mm-hmm. during that time. Mm-hmm. That's right. You're perfectly right. Mm-hmm. It's a trip. It's a trip how we're getting a second chance on the Lord. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But his people are going to get a third and fourth chance. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because they're his. Right. Amen. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's do let's do 11 and then we'll go to our chapter 58. <laughs> Psalm 58. Uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. 11. What do you mean by Jeremiah 11? Yeah, Jeremiah 11 because it's a reminder of the covenant. Oh, 11. Go ahead, Adolfo, start us off. Yes, okay. It says, uh, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Hear the words of this covenant and speak to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Cursed is the man who does not obey the words of this covenant, 
which I commanded you fathers in the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, do not according to all that I command you. So shall you be my people, and I will be your God, that I might establish the oath which I have sworn to you fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. And I answer and said, so be it, Lord. Verse 6. Go ahead, baby. Then the Lord said to me, proclaim all these words in the city of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, hear the words of this covenant and do them. For I earnestly exhorted your fathers in that day. I brought them up out of the land of Egypt until this day, rising early and exhorting, saying, obey my voice. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but everyone followed the dictates of his evil heart. Therefore, I will bring up upon them all the words of this covenant which I commanded them to do, but which they have not done. And the Lord said to me, <coughs> a conspiracy has been found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned back, they have turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers who refused to hear my words. And they have gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I will surely bring calamity on them, which they will not be able to escape. And though they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods to whom they offer incense, but they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble. 13. I'll go ahead. For according to the number of your cities were your gods of Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, you have set up altars to that shameful thing, altars to burn incense to Baal, so do not pray for these people or lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry out to me because of their trouble. What has my beloved to do in my house? Having done lewd deeds with many, and the holy flesh has passed from you. When you do evil, then you rejoice. The Lord called your name. Green olive tree, lovely and of good fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he has kindled fire on it, and its branches are broken. For the Lord of hosts who planted you has pronounced doom against you for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering in incense or offering incense to Baal. Now the Lord gave me knowledge of it, and I know it, for you showed me their doings. But I was like a, a, a docile lamb brought to the slaughter, and I did not know that they had devised schemes against me, saying, let us destroy the tree with its fruit, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be remembered no more. They're talking about our Lord, right? Mm -hmm. But, O oh Lord of hosts, you who judge righteously, testing the mind of the heart, let me see your vengeance on them. For to you I have revealed my cause. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the men of Anathoth, who seek your life, saying, do not prophesy in the name of the Lord 
lest you die by our hands. Before thus says, therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, I will punish them. The young men shall die by the sword. Their sons and their daughters shall die by famine. And there shall be no remnant of them, for I will bring catastrophic ca catastrophe on the men of Anathoth, even the year of their punishment. <clears throat> so it's all going to go down, you know, because they because they said no to God. Why? Why does that one say punishment? Mine says visitation. Mine says, verse 22 says, Therefore this is what the Lord of hosts says, I am about to punish them. The young men will die by the sword. Their sons and daughters will die by famine. They will have no remnant. For I will bring disaster on the people of Anath in the year of their punishment. Here's his punishment. Mine says visitation. Huh. Well, the day of their visitation, when the Lord comes to judge them, right? Oh. That's in the book of Isaiah, I think, the, the day of the visitation. <clears throat> but um, this is uh, verse 10 through, verse 10 through 11. It says, the Lord said to me, a conspiracy has been discovered among the men of Judah. And the residents of Jerusalem, they have re they have returned to the sins of their ancestors who refused to obey my words and have followed other gods to worship them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah broke my covenant I made with their ancestors. It's the um, the biblical worshiper can appeal to can appeal to the Lord for help on the basis of the covenant. When the covenant is broken. Through the people's unfaithfulness, there is no longer any basis for appeal. Even if they cry out to God, if this has been the, a sincere, if this had been a sincere appeal, based on genuine repentance, the Lord would have been open to their hearing. But since the Judeans were still appealing to other gods, it was clear that the covenant remained broken. Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord says, told to the uh, spoke to the prophet Isaiah. It says, it says, it says, do not pray for them. You know, he, he right here he told them in verse fourteen. He says, as for you, do not pray for these people. Do not raise up a cry or a prayer on their behalf, for I will not listen. I will not be listening when they call out to me at the time of their disaster. <clears throat> because they broke the covenant. When the covenant is broken through the people's unfaithfulness, there is no longer any basis for appeal, even if they cry out to God. If this had been a sincere appeal based on a genuine repentance, the Lord would have been open to their hearing. But since the Judeans were still appealing to other gods, it was clear that the covenant had been had remained broken. Mm. I mean that I mean that that speaks volume though. <laughs> That's why he speaks to Jeremiah uh, Jeremiah, you know, in verse one. It says the Lord came to Jeremiah from the this is the word of the Lord. That came to Jeremiah says, listen to the words of this covenant and tell them to the men of Judah and the residents of Jerusalem. So, you know, both of them, the northern side and the south side, Judean residents of Jerusalem, Jer Judean residents of Jerusalem. So Judah, remember, we hear, we hear Jerusalem, you got to think of the two tribes. The two tribes in Jerusalem are Judah and Benjamin. Mm -hmm. When you hear Israel, you got the ten tribes. You must tell them this. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Let a curse be on the man who does not obey the words of this covenant, which I command. 
your ancestors when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the fire, out of the iron furnace. And this is what this is what the uh, Psalm fifty eight is referring to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go ahead and read Psalm fifty eight. Hermano Richard, you with us? Yes, sir. I'm here. All right, brother, take us in. Okay, amen. Uh, Psalm 58. Psalm 58, verse uh, 1 through 3. All right, yeah? Amen, mm -hmm. brother. Amen. To the chief musician set to do not destroy a mitzvah of David. Do you indeed speak righteousness, you silent ones? Do you judge uprightly, you sons of men? Verse 2, no, in heart you work wickedness. You weigh out the violence of your hands in the earth. Verse 3, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Verse 4. Right. I read it, hermano Gus. Uh, verse 4, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf ladder adder that stoppeth her ear. Five, which will not hearken to the voice of her charmers, charming never so wisely. Six, break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Seven. I'll go ahead, uh, Adolfo. Let them flow away as water, as waters which run continually. When he bends his bow, let his arrows be as if cut in pieces. Let them be like a snail which melts away as he goes, like a stillborn child of a woman that they might not see the sun. Before you, you pots can fill the burning thorns, he shall take them away as with whirlwind, as in his living and burning wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that men will say, Surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely he is God who judges in the earth. Right. I mean, that right there is Hebrews 11, verse 6, right? <laughs> but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that what that he, that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. That's the reward. The reward that David, that David is, is prophesying here. The righteous, como dijo Adolfo, right now in verse 10, says the righteous will rejoice. When he sees the when he sees the retribution, he will wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Then the people will say, "Yes, there is a reward for the righteous. There is a God who judges the earth." Um, notice, notice. Uh, you know, we think of um, we think of uh, what's the what verse is that? It says, "Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is Lord." Mm -hmm. For the glory right? of God. And look at look at uh, verse eleven here in Psalm fifty-eight. Yeah. Como dijo Adolfo. Mm -hmm. Then the so people. The saying, there work for so that verse eleven fifty-eight. So that men will say, "Surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely He is God who judges in the earth." Right? <clears throat> and my home in Bible says, then the people will say, yes, there is a reward for the righteous. The righteous will be rewarded. And they shall not be moved. Right? Come on. And Man. there is God who judges the earth, who judges on earth. I mean, that verse right there speaks volume. Yes, sir. But it's the junior. Yeah. Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. 
that mm -hmm. at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Right? You will bow down, right? Amen. Come on. And, and here in verse 11 says that people will say. <laughs> right? Yes, there is a reward for the righteous. <laughs> mm -hmm. There is a God who judges on the earth. I mean, Amen. we just read we just read Isaiah chapter 11, uh, Isaiah chapter 12, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when the Isaiah is saying, Lord, right? Right. He's, he says, will you be righteous, Lord, even if I bring a case against you? Yet I wish to contend with you. Why does the way of the wicked prosper and why does the treacherous live at ease? Mm-hmm. You have Jeremiah's complaint here, and David prophesies right here that there is a God who judges the earth. Then the people will say, yes, there is a reward for the righteous. Surely he is God who judges in the earth. And you know, just like Randy was talking about that girl he was ministered to, and she was saying, because it caught my attention, it made me think, and say, you know, I'm not going to listen to anything from a book. But we know as believers, because we might have said that stuff before we, we were saved, before we believed, you know, before our eyes were opened up and we were freed from the truth or free from a lie by the truth. Amen. Jesus Christ is the truth. And that girl said, you know, but yet we know that all scripture is God breathed, right? When they say it's a book, it's a, but it, we know this is my Bible. It is God speaking to me, you know, because God speaks through his word. He speaks through his people. And just like Jesus said to the devil, for it is written, it is written, that book in the scriptures it is written because it was spoken, because it's the word of God, it's true, Come it's on. alive. Come on, somebody. It is written, surely he is God who judges in the earth, that men will say, surely there is reward for the righteous, because he is God, <laughs> uh, no, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, because let every man be a liar and God be true. Amen. Amen. For God man. is not a man that he should lie because his word, his book, it is written. The word, it's alive. It's active. It does not, uh, you know, uh, it accomplishes what it's set out to do. So oh, if ever tells us that it's just a book, we could tell him something else, right? It's not void. Right. It's not void. Thank you, brother. It's not void. Amen. Ooh, it says in the book of Romans, you know, chapter 1, verse 22, he says, Professing to be wise, they became fools. Mm. They changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like incorruptible men and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Like mm. Randy, Big Randy was saying about these guys, you know, they, they just take the loot. And they uh, don't listen and everything. They just, you know, our job is to be there and to minister to these people. The my the Holy Spirit grab one of them to wake up from the stupor that they're in. Mm. You know, to maybe wake up. That's that's our hope to go in there. But we know that not everybody. Is going to do it because they're being deceived. They're blinded by the owner of this world. Amen. You know, they're blinded. We were blinded once. Yes, you know, sir. we all were blinded. In uh, in uh, I mean, someone out there took the time to pray for us, to took us into their wings and yes, prayer sir. and supplication and you know and thanksgiving and everything. And maybe in some of us, there was someone who took the time to talk to us uh, person to person to get to know each other and then to minister as time we're going to go by you know i in my walk i i have found that the world is it just keeps on going it's messed up and it, it, sure, it sure seems like there is no hope you know, I can see that even in my own family, many members of my own, my parents' children and, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren 
I can even see among them, you know, the the blindness that the enemy has on them. And uh, I just grateful and thankful to our God that he put his eyes on us and that we said, yes, here I am because we needed him. And for whatever reason, we accepted the invitation. And now we know the truth. You know, we know the truth that we are not to give up. You know, with these guys, if one of them just take the loop and go away and go happy thinking that he fooled us or make fool of ourselves or that he just took advantage, you know, there mm -hmm. will be another one they won't. You know, they maybe, it's just like one of those homeless guys, they are working because they're working, asking for money over there. You know, could you spare a dollar? Could you give me two dollars? Could you give me this? Could you give me that? If he, if he asks, 50 people and one of them gives him a dollar that's a dollar that he didn't have you know so he's working and throughout the day that, there there's some people that collects uh, a lot of money maybe more than others and eventually it's like i heard this example today this uh, what you mentioned uh, the the example uh, this little this girl her name was kim it's a true story she was flying an airplane by herself, and he got the the weather got real bad, and their her uh, uh, machine things uh -huh. were going bad, and she got lost. She didn't know where she was going, and then she started asking for help. Anybody the navigation. Out there, you know, to, to, yeah, he started. She started asking for help. And finally, someone answered her call and said that, she, that he was going to guide her to a place where she could land the plane. You know, she didn't know this guy, but she put her whole trust in him wow. because she had no choice. Mm. She had no choice, but the guy knew where she was because he saw her in his yep. machine. You know, she knew where the plane was. So she was directing her to a safe place. And just like her, you know, putting her trust in this guy, Jesus Christ saw us. Oh. And, you know, and we have to, we put our trust in him. Amen. You know? We Amen, were lost brother. and we put our trust in him, you know, and he saved us. And that's the hope of each and individual that we come across to maybe this one will get a seat in her car and the enemy is not going to take it out, away. You know, maybe the seed that we plant today is going to go into a a, a, a a very good earth and it's going to, someone is going to water it and it's going to grow, you know. There is a guy yeah. right now at the Bible study that we have on Thursday mornings his name is uh, Sitting Bear. Uh, he's the Indian descendant, and he is uh, uh, he's getting out of drugs. He's in the house right now. Uh, eight eight months he's been clean, and he's hanging Praise on the to the Word. And he's getting on to the Word, and he's going to the Bible studies. Is is his third or fourth week over there at the Bible study? You know, and he thinks that he knows everything already, but he's on fire, you know, because he has found the truth. He Amen. has found a Hallelujah. way out. And he's doing what the Lord has him to do. And he told us today that the very day that he saw us there, he was looking at a girl. And he was looking at a girl that he was, you know, very beautiful girl, according to himself. And he said that he saw the Bibles open at the table and he was attracted to the table where the Bibles were, Wow! you know? So, you know, the Lord definitely was his aid to come over there and he's going over there and he's hanging on to the word and he's probably going to go to the the church that you go to, Big Randy. Oh yeah, Prince Love? Yeah. yeah, he's probably, he's thinking of going over there as soon as he get a chance. Yeah, but anyways, you know, it's just the seeds that the the we plant in the in the minds and the hearts of people. We don't know if they're gonna uh, 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 grow, you know, eventually mm -hmm. in people's minds. 
but you know it's not our job you know really to 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 know to know that it's just like a prayer we know the lord ask us to pray for big things little things all things up and down and all around simple prayers big prayers or whatever because we know that he said that he promised that he was going to answer the prayers but it's not according to how we ask it's according to his will it's according to his purpose it's according to how he is dealing with the individuals that we praying for you know and and so everything is it, it is it is just it, it i'm amazed i'm my mind just is it blows away my mind blows away just the, the the beauty of the powerful god that we have and it's yes and, it's sad it's sad it hurts really it hurts to see people how blind they are and they don't see the truth and they're so close to the truth it, it, you know it's so so I, I can imagine that the <clears throat> lord cry a lot the lord probably cry a lot seeing all of those people when he said that you know he saw like a ship like a sheep without a shepherd he had compassion on people he came to save the people you know but even then not everybody not everybody uh, listened to him there was people in there they were uh, their chest because of the miracles you know, they were there just for the miracle, just for the taking. They just went to take the loop and run. You know, they yeah. just they didn't have the ears to hear, or the 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 perception that the Son of God was in there with them. Not even the apostles. Not even the apostles. They, even though they they was they were walked with the Lord for three and a half years, they didn't understand until you know the the Pentecost took place, you know. So it's it's not an easy thing, but in the same in the same in the same token, it is a decision that we all humans have. Every human being has a decision to make. And I, I'm pretty sure that the Lord is not gonna let any human being without having the chance real chances a thousand a million chances to to show his power to him even in nature the lord says if if uh, if people in africa or uh, whatever you know they don't know the gospel they don't know the bibles they don't know books or anything like that they don't know how to read or whatever nature will is it, is in there you know like it says in in psalm 19 the heavens declare his glory, <clears throat> the firmament show the work of his hands, you know. In day of today, it, it speaks of everything it speaks about him, you know. And the Lord is so merciful that he's not gonna let anybody, any anybody go without having real chances, you know, to accept him. I'm pretty sure really in good. my thinking, in my mind, I kind of believe. He's going to open up the truth in each individual. And then the individual is going to have to choose, should I go with money, women, alcohol, drugs, or life eternal? But they're going to see it. They're going to see it clearly, you know. And unfortunately, you know, in the book of Romans tells us that eventually many will not be able to do it, you know. Maybe it's the maybe be so it's, caught up. You're gonna cut up with the world, yeah. you know, and the deception of the world. Uh, I, I would hate that, to be in that shoes. Oh, I hate that. I would well, make up for for bit. You know, the we we go back. <laughs> I can't be <laughs> in those shoes. You know. uh None of us are going to go back. We're too, we, we've gone too far. In the name of Jesus, I declare none of us will go back. We, we, um, we, uh, how do you say, our house is built on solid, on the solid rock. Amen. The parable the of cheap you know, cornerstone, the, bro. Come on. We're not, the, the, we, we already had some, some storms. Not to say that bigger ones aren't coming, 
No, no, but definitely. you know what? We built our house on a solid foundation, a solid rock. I, for one, did, uh, experienced that that parable when I became born again the first time on fire. But the storm came, and I did not have my house built on a solid foundation. I did not know the word well enough. I did not know my my Lord and Savior. Uh, my relationship was not uh, knitted, you know, uh, sewn together. It was uh, a, an acquaintance yeah. more than a relationship. And the storm came. It was a doozy. I was hurt. I was angry. And I went right back to my vomit. Went right back to the vomit. For those of the ones that I judged, that I pointed fingers at, saying they're weak because they backslid because they went back to the to the stuff. They went back. They're weak. Yeah. I had myself like this, and I had them down like this. I experienced it. The Lord allowed me to make a, a, a choice of my free will, and it took me 20-some-odd years to be brought to a place where you think you have a rock bottom. Sometimes you got some deeper rock bottoms coming ahead. When you think that, you know what? I did it. Because when people say, how did you, you know, they ask me, uh, how did you do it? Become sober. Once I really, really, really surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I said, you know what? I didn't do it. The Lord gave me the strength and opened my eyes and told me you've done enough. You know, Spin up, spin, play Russian roulette. Somebody talks you into it. How many times are you going to spin it before you blow your brains out? Yeah, you're not going to, you know, a couple of times. Okay, I did it. I survived it. Well, do it again. No, 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 no. I, I, I've already played Russian roulette. I'm not going to keep on because eventually the Lord told me, You've done enough. You should live on the streets. Fire. Stay on the streets. You're going to die on the streets, Richard. So, you know what? We none of us are ever going to go back. In the Amen. name of Jesus, you Amen. know, God's taking us too far, and Amen. and I declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But that, but, uh, but Adolfo, that was a beautiful word. That was a good that man. That was whoever's listening. Re replay what this man was saying because that good was analogy, that was Adolfo. Yeah, love that. Yeah, um, with what Adolfo shared. Yes, that was a good good point. Speak volume. A lot, a lot of good points. Yes, I mean everybody shares Praise good God. stuff. We all, we all we all share good stuff. But Praise God. Fire me up, bro. This this is what came out of what Adolfo shared. Because <clears throat> I hear you guys and I just write. <laughs> mm. But but it's like Amen. this. Right on, Pastor. It says it says no one ever ever came to faith without making a decision. <clears throat> Right. It says no one ever came to faith without making a decision. Mm. As for me and my house, Come on. we shall serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Amen. Right. Declare it, decree it, speak it. Once, once more again, it says no one ever came to faith without making a decision. Yes. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. We shall serve I, declare, the Lord. I declare that by faith. I declare as for me and my Amen. house, we Amen. shall serve the Lord. I always declare that Amen. by faith in Amen. my house. Amen. Yes, Amen. And just like in Acts, Acts 16, 33, when we say, the, you know, how must I be saved? Sir, how must I be saved? And just, right. and he was saved and his whole household was saved. That's what mm -hmm. I declare too. That, you know, I was saved and my whole household will be saved. Amen. Not Amen. by me, not by me, but just follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Far be it, I, I boast anything other than the cross because the cross is what saved me. The grace mm -hmm. and the mercy of God and the love that Amen. chases after you, that doesn't give up on the backslider, the sinner, the, the foolish, mm -hmm. the wicked that we once were, you know? You know, brother, you know, also this morning, what a blessed day today. What a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Oh, every day is a blessed day. But I, I also heard this, uh, this saying that it is nothing wrong. It is not a wrong thing to follow someone who's righteous and has a righteous life, and is a godly man. Mm. You know, it's nothing wrong to follow a man steps. You know, if he's ahead of you, you know, in, uh, in the word, in uh, experiences that is going to help you grow in the Lord to give you <clears throat> tools 
so that we can also be used by the Lord in a way, in the various ways to be able to brother, brother the, the kingdom of the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, Amen. you know, I, I like that. What I heard about this is nothing wrong to follow someone who's just someone mm-hmm. who, you know, you know, who you have a relationship with, you know, and you know, the man or the woman, the woman, you know, it's nothing wrong. Nothing right. wrong with that. Amen. Amen. Imitate, imitate Christ, you know, be, be like-minded like Christ. And, you know, it's attractive. It's attractive, mm-hmm. you know, because the world, what does the world have to offer? It's just, you know, uh, temporary riches. Yes. You know, I mean, heaven is paved with streets of gold. Talk about temporary riches. Gold, you know, but <laughs> come on, man, you know. You know, we should tell thieves and robbers, hey, I know yes. a good, I know a good place to there's a lot of gold, man. There's a lot of gold. Follow me, you know. Just start reading the Bible and, and get to get to know Jesus, and you'll find all the gold, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have enough gold myself. <laughs> I got some gold too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's good, guys. So verse well before that one, let me just say this other one. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. I know you got lots. Right, I'm here. Verses are popping up in my head. Right, I know you write writing about. But here's another one. It says conversion to Christ is a, conversion to Christ is a supernatural act of God that produces change. Mm-hmm. Right, conversion to Christ is a supernatural act of God that produces change. Uh, the other one was um, Johnny 12 says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. Is what, you guys, what you guys are sharing. Amen. Amen. But notice Amen. how he says, but what's a disciple? <laughs> a, disciple is, is, a disciple is one who, who learns to follow. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. That's what came out with Johnny 12 says, I am, it says, I am the light of the world. He who what? Who follows me. Mm-hmm. Shall, not, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. Amen. Amen, Pastor. And you know, that's a beautiful thing. Because you know what I see with that? The light of life. I'm picturing again what Adolfo was saying about the, the, in the womb. I mean, and, and, and what you're saying, uh, the, the, we've, we haven't evolved. We've been transformed. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Anyone come to Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed and gone away. Everything becomes new. A new mindset, a new way to think, a new character. We become who God created us to be. That man that we were before was the carnal man, the 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 the, the natural man, thought of the world, and you know, keep up with the Joneses, get in the rat race, and become educated and rich and have things. That's that's nothing. That's nothing. You know, things of this world. We're supposed to put our mind on things from above and not below. You know, the temple things, we've got to think everlasting. We've got to think eternal, you know, kingdom thoughts. And, 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 and you know, like you were saying, Pastor, or, uh, you know, as far as uh, set our mind on things. Uh, what were you saying? Uh, something about uh, when we were talking in Psalms um, uh, about the kingdom and, um, oh, gosh, what was it? Uh, oh, you were saying that uh, about uh, that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Just like... Uh, Second, or was it uh, Colossians three twenty three? Uh, you know that do all things wholeheartedly unto the Lord, and not to men, knowing that that uh, your reward is in your inheritance, and that we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Our reward is not riches and gold and silver. Our reward is our our names are written in the last book of life, and we are not just children of creation; we are children of God. We are adopted, grafted in our inheritance to the to the kingdom, to the mm-hmm. King of Kings, our Lord and Savior, our everything, our brother, our friend, and we are so blessed. We are mm-hmm. so blessed. the 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 world just doesn't realize it, mm-hmm. but we have a mission, right? Amen. 
We have a mission. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I know, I know, I've experienced that. I don't know about you guys' experience. You probably have, but there's going to be people that call us and going to say bad things about us, you know, that we're going to go, what? And even the ones that love us are going to say some things about us that we know it's not right. Going to call us, uh, you know, uh, like we think we're too good. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're all holy, holy now. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're, you're, oh, you're going to, you're, 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 you're judging me. You're judging me, you know. Oh, you 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 think you're all smart now. You think you're all that now, you know. It, th that hurts, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it's not true because greater is He who is in me than He who is in the world. I'm just an instrument. I'm just a willing vessel, and I don't walk on water yet. But if God calls me to walk on water, I will. <laughs> I will. Mm -hmm. I declare I will, because. He says it, I'll do it. Because why we say, you know, they say Lord, Lord with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. I want my heart to be like a man of like a man after God's own heart, like King David, you know, who's wrote, wrote the psalmist, you know, a, a, a contract spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know, I know, I speak for myself, my brothers. I got a lot of shedding, a lot of mo shaping and, and, and cutting off to do, you know, and, and <laughs> it ain't going to feel good, but. Mm -hmm. Every every chip, every shoulder, you know, if it gets me closer to heaven. Mm -hmm. Glory to God, you know, glory to God, mm -hmm. glory to God. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Preach it. Got it right here. That's a good word right there. Because it's the truth. For those no who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, or to be carnally minded in death, but to be spiritually minded in life and peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good word right there. Amen. And you know, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. So we can't, we Which can't let the, the, it said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we can't let no punk weak flesh tell us what to do. Well, you know, well, I mean, hey man, you better tell that flesh to shut up flesh. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It says, well, like Romans 8, 6, right? To, to mm. be carnally minded is dead. <clears throat> but the, to be spiritually minded is minded is life and peace. You want life and peace, then be spiritually minded. <clears throat> but to be carnally minded, what does it mean, carnally minded? It means you got one foot in the church and one foot in the world. <laughs> Lukewarm. <laughs> Lukewarm. I mean, that, that'll throw you into depression. <clears throat> Just think when, when you're brushing your teeth, what do you do when you brush your teeth? You spit out that water. <laughs> lukewarm. <laughs> the Lord said you're going to spit us out of his mouth, man. Lukewarm. But it's like, um, what do you say? Um, well, let's, let's, just, uh, let's, let's just end with uh, Psalm 82. 82? <clears throat> yeah, we'll end with Psalm 82 and we'll go ahead and pray out. Um, because my King James... It says this, my King James in Psalm 58, verse 1 says, Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? And, you know, the reason why the King James gives you, O ye sons of men, is because it distinguishes between the sons of God and the sons of men. When it, when it talks about the sons of men, it shows them that they're, it shows them their weakness. It says, towards towards God <laughs> right the sons of men reveals their weakness and the sons of God speaks of the covenant mm. like what David Psalm 82 uh, well I was reading Psalm 58 and then we're going to go to Psalm 82 because Psalm, 50, Psalm 82 says Psalm 82 verse 1 says God stands in the congregation of the mighty and here my, here my King James 
<clears throat> verse 1 says, Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O you sons of men? So the King James with Psalm 82 gives you the congregation. Here in the New King James, Nelson Amen. Bible says, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. But my home in Bible says, God's in Psalm, in Psalm 82. But it's referring to the rulers, those who are in authority. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and read into that. Psalm, Psalm 80. Psalm Psalm. 80. Amen, bro. A bit. To God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Uh, go ahead, Adolfo. Or deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. <clears throat> All the foundations of the earth are unstable. Verse 6. Finish it up. Finish it up. I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. Yeah. I mean, we had to end. We had to end with Psalm eighty-two. <laughs> Think for justice, because you have to read Psalm eighty-two <clears throat> with Psalm. Um, 58. It just goes together with it. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it congregation talks about the mighty, it talks about the civil leaders, it talks about those in the church that they're corrupted <clears throat> and they're going to give an account to God. Right? And verse 6 says, I said, uh, verse 6 says, I said, you are gods, you are all sons of the Most High. Verse 7, however, you will die like men and fall away like any other ruler. Verse 8, rise up, God, judge the earth, for all the nations belongs to you. All nations are going to have to give an account to God. Mm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Amen. You're all going to have to give an account to God. All these nations, all these, all these rulers, all those who are in authority, all the political leaders that we have, will give an account to God. Yeah, they sure will. Sure will. Um, but yeah, we'll stop there because I keep going. <laughs> and that's what that's that, Pastor. That's when we wash our feet in their blood. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sounds so like evil. But the but the you know, like it says here in Psalm fifty eight, right? When referring to the blood, mm -hmm. it speaks about. You know, I mean, back in the back in the days, what were they doing? I mean, they had axes, right? An axe. They had swords. They had spears. It was it mm -hmm. was like like a malicious battle, bro. Just yeah. chopping heads. You know, just blood, you know a, a bloodbath all over. Right. Or what would they do when when they would when they would uh, conquer the war? They would walk over these dead bodies with the blood all over their feet. Mm, come on. That's what it's referring to. Right here where mm, it says, okay. 58 verse 11, it says, so, so that men will say, surely there is, a re there is a reward for the righteous. Surely. Oh, okay, here it's 10, right? Verse mm -hmm. 10. Psalm 58. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So in the blood of the wicked is referring to when a when 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 um when a war is won. Uh, oh, that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. And you're walking over all these dead bodies. Wow. Stepping on their blood. 
mm-hmm. of these men. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that's what this this psalm is referring to. Okay. I mean, I mean, today we have what bombs we have. I mean, mm-hmm. but about it. <laughs> somebody, you know, just throwing an axe on your back. Yeah, all the blood. <laughs> Throws another axe at you again. <laughs> blood bath, blood bath. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy, bro. It was. It was I mean, that's what it's kind of referring to. Mm-hmm. But we got to think about it. it's poetry, también. But back in the time, that's what it, that's what that was happening. Spears, axes. You know. I mean, swords. Yeah. Arms chopped off, heads chopped off. Mm-hmm. And stab, you know, getting not stabbed, but you know, machetazos, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, you heard blood for blood, but you know, all the saints' blood that was spilled had over the over the centuries, all the blood. And you know, sacrifice. Uh, they used to slaughter all the and sacrifice all the what hundreds of bulls and hundreds of lambs, and it was. It was just a bloody mess, yeah. Because, because you know, the atonement for the sins, all that blood that had to be, you know. But Jesus came to shed His blood once and for all, the perfect blood of the Lamb. Amen. You know, but but yeah, sin sin is ugly and it takes a lot of blood. You right. know, mm-hmm. but He didn't just shed His blood on the cross, but when He was scourged, you know, when He was whipped and and all that, it was ugly. Bloody. Yeah. Pastor, before we pray out, can I play play a song that I remember I said I was going to play? Yeah, song play it. I wanted to play, uh, you know, it's a prayer. And it's it's for, for everybody listening and for uh, for my for you, my brothers and our families. Amen. 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 So thank you, Lord. Julia. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I speak the name of Jesus. Over you, come on. In your hurt, in your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name, cause it's all that I can do. In desperation, I seek Him. I will pray this for you. I pray for your healing. Circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough happened today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. I speak the name of all authority. Every blessing, every promise is faithful to keep. I speak the name of no grave could ever hold. He is great. He is stronger. He's the God of possible. I pray for your healing. That circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life. In Jesus' name. Name in Jesus' name. Oh. Come believing, come receiving. Oh, the Father, the Spirit, 
is now forever yours. Come believe it. Come receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus, all things are possible. I pray for your healing. The circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. Jesus name. I pray miracles of your life. Jesus name. I pray for revival, restoration of faith. I pray that the dead will come to life. Jesus name, in Jesus name. Come believe it, come receive it. Oh, the power of the Spirit is now forever yours. Come believe it. Come receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. All things are possible. I speak the name of Jesus over you in your hurt. In your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I seek heaven. I pray this for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, brother. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor. That's good. <clears throat> I mean, it speaks everything that we need today, right? I mean, at this moment, Amen. right? Amen. Amen. I pray for your healing. I pray for your, your, I pray for your healing. I pray for your circumstances. <clears throat> I pray, I, I pray for change. I mean, that's a good song, though. That's good. That speaks volume. It, it, that's a beautiful song. It, it touches me, and it just, uh, I like to. It's like the Psalms. You know, it's, it's a prayer that's being, uh, and it's the word of God being sung. You know, this is a prayer that's being sung. You know, it's basically a prayer that can cover cover it all, just like the blood of Jesus covers it all, you know? Right. I speak the name of Jesus over you. Amen. That's good. I speak the blood but, of know, Jesus over like you. I, you know, I, I quote that, uh, we don't, we don't not make requests of you because we, we do not make we make request of you, Lord, because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. <laughs> right? Amen. We're at the Lord's mercy, bro. Amen. Amen. And yeah, we, we we speak the name of Jesus over you. That's a good song, bro. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Um, well, praise out, bro. Amen. Praise you, the Lord. Amen. Let us in worship. <laughs> praise out. <laughs> amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Father God. Uh, is there any re special request that we could just add as as I pray out? We could just add those. Uh, I'll just let whoever has a request just throw it out there at the end, okay? Mm -hmm. Lord, we just come before you, Lord, uh, with your mercy and grace at our at our at our at our uh, at our uh, <laughs> blessing, Lord, because you're a blessing, Lord. This 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 Bible study is a blessing. Lord, it's filled with your spirit, with your truth, with your word, with your love, with your mercy and grace, Lord. Thank you for Pastor Junior, Lord, as he sacrifices for us all the time. And each brother here that sacrifices his time, it, it, it's a it's a it's a uh, fast of our time, Lord, for unto you, Lord. But you're so worthy of more than that, Lord. Yes. But Lord, we just pray in the precious. Junior said that we speak the Jeremiah prayer that in my house we we'll serve the Lord and we declare and decree it over our household, over our family members, generations to come, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, Father God, you set us free. And Lord, Father God, you come to heal the sick, to, to free the captives, Lord. That, that your spirit is upon us, Lord, for these times to declare the perfect year of the Lord. So we thank you for the word that we heard tonight, Lord, Father God. Yes, Lord, the wicked will have their time. You are the judge and no one else is, Lord. You sit on the mercy seat right now, but soon you will be sitting on the judgment seat, Lord. So, Lord, may, may we be filled with your word and spirit to proclaim the gospel to our family, to our household, to whoever you beckon to us, unto us, Lord. But you'll draw men into us, Lord. As Randy was saying, that, that he got to minister to, to, to someone who's trapped and lost and blind, Lord. That many will come, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because the, this is not just a fellowship and a, and a study. This is preparation for warfare, Lord. This is, this is uh, Father God, our, our weaponry, Lord, Father God. The word of God, just as you spoke it unto the enemy, Lord, in the desert. We shall speak it too, Lord. And we're not going to worry what to say, Lord, because you'll give us the words to see. You're equipping us with Amen. weaponry. You're equipping us with life and with blessings, Lord. And may we speak it, Lord, in a timely fashion. Lord, and may it, even at times, Lord, when we feel that we're not qualified, we know you qualify the unqualified, Lord. Amen. So thank you, Lord, for calling us. Thank you for blessing us in our mother's womb as we read tonight, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings you have, even the ones that we're unaware of at the moment, Lord. But, Lord, we know there's blessing. We know there's a future and a hope. We know, Lord, we have a place in heaven, Lord, and our family members do too. Mm -hmm. As we lead up to the kingdom and our family, and Lord, the, the, the word, Lord, it, it's going to be, uh, it might be dormant, like we were speaking of a seed, Lord, Father yeah. God, he planted, Lord, but, and it might not seem like nothing's happened, but as as uh, Brother Gus said, that your word never comes back void, Lord. So, yes. Father God, Thank you. you know that, Lord, it's going to come to fruitation, Lord, at your time, Lord, just like at the time that we came unto you, Lord, wholeheartedly, oh, surrendering Thank all to you, Lord. It, it took a time, it took a minute, Lord, but Lord, yes. we, we will not give up on those who are lost, Lord. We will not give up on, on those, Father God, who seem hard-headed because we were hard-headed too, Lord. But Lord, Father God, sometimes we even still a little hard-headed. I know the apostles yeah. were hard-headed sometimes, but Lord, thank you for, your, as Pastor Junior said, your mercy and your grace, Lord. Yes. Don't fill us, Lord. And Lord, multiply our rest tonight, Lord. And that yes. we wake up tomorrow, Lord. Father God, whether it's here, there, or in the air, that we'll be filled with your love, with your spirit, Lord, with a refreshing a fresh in spirit, Lord. Yes. Uh, Lord, we can bless this, this word, Lord, that it saturated in us, it engraved in us, Lord, and Father God resonates in us, and that we could share it, Lord, and Father God, that it will uh, prosper much fruit, Father God, from this word tonight, as we, all the studies do. And bless those brothers who couldn't make it tonight, Lord, that, and everybody listening, uh, after this recording, Lord, because thank you. Thank you for this platform that we have, Lord. Thank and you. Again, bless the man of God. Yeah. Man of God, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord. Our brother, your thank son, you, Lord, your servant. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. And Lord, I also want to lift up my buddy, Scott Rogers. Lord, you said when we come together in your name that you're here. And, Lord, I just want to lift up my brother right now. I just want to ask that you touch him with your mighty hand, Lord, and your outstretched arm. Reach down on my brother and touch him and heal him, Lord. Lord, you know he's going through a heavy deal right now. But, Lord, just touch my brother, Lord. He needs a special touch from you. And no one else can do this, Lord, but you can. And, Lord, you said if we have faith of a mustard seed, we can move a mountain, Lord. So, Lord, we have faith in you, Lord, that you can move this mountain in my brother's life, Lord. I ask that you just give him that peace that passes all understanding, Lord. I ask that you just... Heal my brother and set him free and just make all things new in his life, Lord. 
so he has a few more years to live with his family, Lord. <clears throat> if it be your will, Lord God, to heal him, I thank you for that, Lord. But of course, your will shall be done. And we trust you, Lord. We know that you got a plan and purpose and a reason, Lord. And we know that all things work together for the good to those that love you and are called upon your purpose, Lord. Make all things new in my brother's life, Lord, so he can live a little longer, Lord, and take care of his family, Lord, and just be able to hang out again and minister like he always does. Take away the pains and the discomforts, Lord, and strengthen his heart to live another 20 years, Lord. Just be with my brother and his wife and his family. And Lord, just, uh, just heal my brother. That's all I can ask right now, for you to heal him, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen, thank you. No, Lord, I'd like, to, I'd like to pray for Brother Randy's sister, Donna. Yes, sir. Uh, she had an operation, Lord, and I know you're the healer, Lord. I ask you to heal her arm and her leg, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Full capacity, Lord Jesus, that she can give you honor and glory in her healing, Lord, that she will yes. praise you with all her heart. As I know she already does, Lord. She yes. loves you. I know she loves you, Lord. I know her heart. I know her. And I know the family of Randy's. I pray for his mother. And they're taking care of her also. Yes, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, just to heal her body. Heal her from head to toe, Lord Jesus. Just the way you can perfectly in the way you do. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. And Lord, I want to lift up uh, Pastor Junior's daughter, Monica, Lord. Thank you for the good report for Laura. We lift her up in prayer as well, Lord. Yes, for Lord. Thank you. Like this uh, healing and strength, Lord. And just want to lift up Monica, Lord, Father God. Give her strength. Yes, Father. Father God, and comfort, Lord, Father God. And Lord, we're praying for that miraculous healing as well for Monica, Lord, yes, Father Lord, God. Yeah. The, the doctors that she has to do with, Lord, Father God, that, that you just anoint them, Lord. Give her the best, Lord, Father God, because you're the best, Lord. Father God, uh, we pray and thank you in advance, Father God, for miracles. Thank Signs you. Signs and wonders in these times, Lord, Father God, for the living testimony, Lord. Father God, bless Monica and her life and her family, Lord, and, and just give her parents strength, Father God, and, and your grace and mercy extended to them, Lord, Father God. Thank you for them, Lord, Father God. Bless their household, Lord. And Father God, I want to lift up my daughter, Stephanie, too, Lord. Uh, yes. Father God, heal her body, Lord. Miraculous healing, Father God. Yes, Lord God. Lord, uh, she's gone through so much, Lord. Uh, my yes. family's gone through uh, strife, Lord. I just pray for unity, Lord, and, and, and peace, Lord. Yes. And we just come together, Lord, uh, like yes. we once were, Lord. And I just pray for that miraculous healing for my daughter as well, Stephanie, Lord. And, and Father God, uh, for my daughter, Serena, out there, Lord, uh, to, to come back home. Just as you call me, Lord, uh, get her attention, Lord, and uh, your mercy and grace extended to her, Lord, to call her home, to her calling, Lord, to what you want her to do, Lord. Uh, you've, you've gifted her, Lord, with a beautiful voice, Lord, and uh, Lord, uh, and now she's not who she's called to be, but I know, Lord, for, for doing what you're going to do, Lord. I, ju I just declare and decree it for these prayers to be answered, Lord, for the mighty healings, as the song said, you know, Lord, that you will heal, you restore, Lord. Yes, Lord, Lord thank you. Perfect, Lord. Yes, Lord, thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you so much for Pastor Junior, Lord, and everything he does for us. And the word is clear in his mind to express it to all of us so we can understand it better, Lord. Thank you for the words that you've given my brother to, sh to share with us, Lord. And I just want to ask that you bless his life, bless his wife, 
bless his family. And Lord, just uh, bless the finances in the house, Lord. And just bless his shop, Lord. Because all of that has everything to do with you, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you just uh, surround my brother with your love and just give him peace, Lord. The peace that passes all understanding. And Lord, we, we love Junior and we love what he does for us. And we love the love that he shares with us whenever we need him, he's there for us. Want to thank you for Junior in our lives. And we just come in agreement, Lord God, in one accord, because that's where he's brought us to. One accord with you, Lord. And we appreciate Junior, Lord, and all that he's done for us. And we just want to ask that you bless his life. And Lord, just uh, thank you so much for everything you're doing for Gus, Lord, everything you're doing to heal my brother. Lord, I know you're, you're, you're overshadowing my brother with your blessings. I know you're keeping him alive for a reason, Lord. I know that you're going to work all things together for the good for his body, Lord. I know this, Lord, because he's still here with us. He should have been gone a while ago, Lord. And he's still here. So I know you have a plan and a purpose and a reason. And Lord, you know he's your child. You know he's here for you. He just wants to serve you and seek your face and be the man that he is, Lord, for his family. So Lord, just touch him and heal him and set him free so he can go out and minister like he likes to do. Just bless his life, bless his wife, his family, Lord, and just bless him, Lord God, and just uh, heal him, set him free. And Lord God, just thank you so much for Adolfo and everything he is to our family here for the men of God. I ask you bless his wife, Lord, bless his life, and just give him more life to live so he can minister and so he can read the Bible more at car shows and witness and tell people about Jesus. Use my brother. Thank you so much for the love that he gives. And Lord, I ask that you pour out your love upon my brother. Lord, we love you, Lord. Thank you for the tabernacle meetings, help from above, the men of God ministry. And Lord, I ask that you be with Elias, Lord. You know, he's got a, a lot on his mind and a heavy heart. And I want to ask that you just surround him with your love. And let him know today that you love him, Lord. Let him know today that he's set free. Let him know today, Lord God, that he will be with you in paradise someday. Let him know today that you're real, Lord. Make yourself real in my brother's life, Lord. And make all things new in his life, Lord. So he can walk his talk and be the man that you chose him to be, Lord. Be with Lalo and his family, Lord. Watch over him, Lord. And be with Alexander, Lord. And allow him to have strong white blood cells, Lord. Or whatever it is that, that's creating havoc in his life. I ask that you touch his little life and allow him that life to live even to 100 years old, Lord. Just be with my little brother and just let him, just set him free, Lord God, and let him be free indeed of any sickness, anything that's interfering with his life. I ask that you heal him and set him free, Lord. Be with Lalo and his family and just let all things work together for the good to those that love you and are called upon your purpose, Lord. 
thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. And just be with all of our brothers who are not here today, like Jimmy and Ernie and Juan, Brother Juan, Lord, and Eddie, Lord. Touch Eddie, Lord, where he's at. We haven't seen him in a while, Lord God, but he's out trying to make a better world out there. Lord, just put a hedge of protection around him and just let him know that we love him, Lord God. And let him know that he's always welcome back home to the tabernacle meetings, Lord. Thank you for what he does. Thank you for who he is. And thank you for his life that you saved, Lord. Thank you for sparing my brother, Lord. Father, we love you, Lord. And our, our petitions are right in your lap right now. Forgive us for all of our sins, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and let your mercy and peace overwhelm us all. And thank you, Lord, once again for our Bible study. In Jesus' name, Lord. And I call to you, Father God, giving you thanks and praises for your love and kindness and for your mercies. <clears throat> Thanking you one more time for who you are. And I just want to thank you for the day that has passed by. Thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us all this day, the past yesterday. And I just praise you and I worship you and I adore you for everything that you have done. Yes, Lord. Not only for my family, for my brothers' families, and for the hope that lies within us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father, for giving us the, the truth, eyes to see the truth. Thank you for giving us, Lord, the way to last forever. Yes. Thank Lord. you for guiding us with as as humans. Thank you for leaders like our pastor junior. Yes. And all the other leaders that have come in my life. Throughout since my youth. Yes. And I just ask you, Lord, that you will bless this new day that is starting just right now. I pray that you will help us, as Brother Richard has said, that you give us a beautiful rest. And whenever you want to wake us up again, here we are, Lord, ready to do your will. Yes, Lord. Help us and let us know what would you want us to do for you. Yes, Lord, Help it. us, what would you want us to do in the name of Jesus? Help yes. us, Lord, to be obedient to your word and help us to be real. Yes, Help Lord. us, Father, help us, I pray, in the name of Jesus. And I ask these things not by might and not by power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, in Jesus' Lord. name, amen. Amen. Yeah, Lord, then. Prayers are request according to your sovereign will. Prayers are request according to your sovereign will, Lord, for Los Jaimes. I thank you for their life, Lord. Jaime Jr., Jaime Sr. Lord, I just pray for their life, Father, and I pray for their for Jaime Jr.'s grandpa. <clears throat> Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would just uh, minister to him, Father. Lord, touch him. Lord, speak to him in the way that you know how, Father God. Yes, Lord. Lord, I once again prayers are request according to your sovereign will. Lord, for Los Jaimes <clears throat> and Lord, for everybody that we mentioned right now Eddie, Lalo, Alexander, Jimmy, Ernie, Juan, Elias, Stephanie, Donna. Yes, Lord. And Lord, my, uh, my friend, customer Karen, Father, who desperately needs your love, your guiding hand, Father God. Lord, Job 12, 10 says, in whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? Father, that's you. Job 12, 10, in whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? And Father, we thank you for that, Lord. Psalm 25, 3, indeed, none of those who wait for you will be put to shame. 
Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray for that, Father. I pray for for our brother Scott Rogers, Father, who's at home in bed, Father God, just crying out to you. Abba, Father, Romans 8, 15, you're not giving us a spirit of bondage again, a bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption to whom we cry out. Abba, Father, have a way there, Father God. Comfort his wife, Lord, as she's yeah. seen her husband in his bed. Lord, just crying out to you, Abba, Father, Lord. Lord, you just meet her right where she's at, Father God, and comfort her, Father, and the only way that you know how, Father. Lord, we feel the weight of that, Father. So just minister to her, Father, and grant her that peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you once again. Thank you for all these men of God, Father God, for their intercessory prayers, Father. And Lord, I thank you for, you know, Adolfo's wife once again. I just thank you for her life. Yes. For my brother's life. I thank you for their ministry. I thank you for all these men of God's ministry, Father, for Gus's ministry, Hermano Randy, Hermano Richard. Lord, I just grateful for that. Hermano Lalo. All these men of God, Lord. Jaime Jr., Jaime Sr., también, Lord. Gracias. So, Lord, go before us, we pray, Father. In Jesus' name. Pray for Bones' his dad, Pastor. Mm. Lord, we pray for Bones' his dad, Father God. That's también, Lord. He's in need yes, of your Lord. divine touch. Yes, Lord. Touch Lord, just like you said in Mark 9, 23, says, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Yes. Lord, I pray if they're struggling with that, Lord, that you would just meet them right where they're at, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, Psalm 40, what is it? Um Psalm 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Let me pray Psalm 46.10 for yes. bones of God and for bones that be in, Lord. That he doesn't deviate to the left or to the right, but Lord, that he would remain focused in you, Father God. Yes, Lord. Be with Dad. Be with Bones. Be with Rick. Be with Randy. Mm -hmm. Thank you once again. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. 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 Lord. Gloria a Dios. Well, until the next week, Pastor. Next week, hermano. <laughs> uh, All right. I, I made it. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was eight. This Lord, is the, this is the time. It was a I little late, but I got it. Man. So may God bless you guys. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may his face will shine upon you. May his countenance be on you and give you peace. Amen. May God, may God bless you and keep you guys. All right. You too, Adolfo. See you. Thank you. See you. See you. God bless you, God brothers. Bless. Thank God you, Pastor. You. Okay. See you later, later Junior. Okay, bro. God bless, brother. See you later, guys. Arrivederci, Ramo. Arrivederci. I'll catch you later, bro. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night.